Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Creative Quarantine Springfield. We are on our, wow, 12th day. The 12th day, y'all. Artists have been in the studios working and cranking and creating great things. Uh, a lot of the works now are just beginning to be photographed so that we can share them with you. Lots of plans down the road for you to be able to participate in purchasing those pieces and acquiring them for your personal collection. And uh, we'll be working on that soon. I don't know if uh, my partner in crime, we're going to plan out at least one or two sales between now and the end of the quarantine. Right now, because the artists are in day 12, they're in their second week of production. So we're going to try to wait and see the week to start getting a few pieces created and completed. And so far, it's been a magical. I've gotten some wonderful things in the mail today. So where's my partner at? She must be on. Uh, uh, what, what? Here I am. I, what happened, I'm lady? Are you? in the mail. How you, oh, you got stuff in the mail? You ain't left <laughs> out. Why you always feel left out? <laughs> we got to do something with that. I know. I know. I don't want to feel left out. I don't want to feel apart. You are a part of everything, woman. You are the central <laughs> focus of all of it. Oh, we got a couple of people on the line. You know, you know what? Sometimes you got to take the time out and give a proper thank you. Sometimes, you know, when you're in the clinches and you're in the trenches and you're throwing punches, you don't have time to recognize some of your people. So I'm going to dedicate this whole day to my partner in crime, you know, Miss Louise Cutler. Because, see, not only is she checking this show, checking me, she's got to make sure this thing doesn't go black on screen. Okay. She has a very, very uh, important job. And she does it well. In addition to keeping all of the stirring the pot where the pot needs to be stirred, but she's also cranking out work, y'all. So <laughs> I, I'm going to dedicate the whole day to my, my partner in crime. So what you got on your mind today before we get started? Well, you know, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the collaborations. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure people don't quite understand what the collaboration is and how it works. So I kind of want to dive into that a little bit um, just to kind of 
talk about talk a little bit about how they work because I know um, some of it is you're sending them to do the work and then and then some of it is they're doing the work and then sending it back to the other artists to do more work so kind of expound upon that a little bit okay for those of you that don't understand a collaboration and and I, I'm not I'm as well bring it down because a lot of folks are not familiar with it the African American art market has been responsible for many collaborations mm -hmm. artists are not really known for working together on a piece mm -hmm. you know musicians do a lot of other disciplines do it but artists haven't done it and the funny thing about it is uh collaborations i feel really began when um back in the 90s there was two twins jerry and terry lynn mm -hmm. and they used to work for uh, keith golden and ens gallery and the two of them would show up with a big canvas four by five feet and the twins would paint a picture by themselves and so I think the collaboration, I have to attribute that to the twins because nobody was even thinking about working on the same piece of material until the twins came out. And when they first came out, they came out strong as twins. Mm -hmm. Now they kind of have pulled away from that and are doing individual, their own individual art careers. So this is what normally happens. An artist will start a piece, mm -hmm. pass it off, and another artist will work on the piece no input, no control, no, hey, I want you to do this. <laughs> you get something in the mail, okay? So it works a couple of different ways. Some people are good starters, some people are good finishers, some people don't know which one they are, mm. okay? In the case of me and my buddy Charles Bibbs, we've probably done the most collaborations. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very spontaneous, we, have, we actually draw similarly Mm -hmm. So we conceptualize similarly, so we can do it on the fly. Charles is what's known, he's known as the Remark King. That A Remark is a small original drawing done on the bottom of a, of a print. And he really mastered my marketing uh, remarks in the 80s and 90s. So this man can take a pencil out, and while you're looking at him, he can blink out, boom, you got a drawing in like a couple minutes, okay? So you put two of us together on one piece of paper, mm -hmm. and you're bound to see some excitement happen. So with that being said, many artists along the way have done major collaborations where they've been reproduced, um, massively distributed. Um, and so we're bringing that concept and have always uh, made that a, con a, a, a part of the creative quarantine, if okay. time allows, because I've been in some quarantines where we just didn't have time to do it. We were so in our own world and in our own grind, so, we didn't uh -huh. have time to do it. So I think the artists, because we have at least two artists that have done a quarantine before mm -hmm. that's why you see them staring around faster because they realize you need to get them in the hands of people early enough mm -hmm. to kind of work it to their their psyche while they're doing this process so and there is no rule uh except for both artists will work on it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now LaShawn has been working diligently the last the first week on preparing them and as a matter of fact Da, 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 da. Let's see what right. you got. What is LaShawn you? In the mail from LaShawn. Oh, I got one charger. I don't know what I'm going to do. He didn't leave me much space, but we're going to do something. <laughs> that looks finished. I might have to just go ahead and add it to my collection. Oh, that's what I said. I hope you sent me something to look and finished. He sent me this one. Oh, that is really pretty. Yeah. Oh, that one just looks finished. Two nice chargers. I also got a slew of flowers. Mm -hmm. I got oh, okay. Nice. I got this in the mail. He really wants me to paint. Yeah. <laughs> I got this in the mail. Oh, that's nice. I got another one similar to that in oh, the mail. Oh, wow. You got all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, me and LaShawn have done quite a few things together, so he knows what's possible. Oh, nice. So I got my stack from him. Mm -hmm. I also got a piece from Deborah Shedrick today. Oh, let's see which one you got from Deborah. Deborah. I've already put it on the drawing table. She gave me something that's nice and textured. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I like I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to work her figure on one half and then send it back to her. Mm, I like that. So I already started sketching on that. So that's that's how the, the uh, collaborations work. Mm -hmm. I hope I, hopefully I answered your question. Right. Well, I, I, I you did. You did. And, and I like the whole thing because I do remember when Deborah was like, well, I'm going to send it to you and send it when she was working on your pieces and sending it back. And now when you do the collaborations, who who keeps the collaborations? Very good question. Normally, the person that renders the paper, it belongs to them. 
But okay. we've even made other rules. Mm -hmm. If we do a collaboration, we normally always do a minimal of two. Okay. Okay. And so if we create uh, uh, 10 of them, we'll both take five. Okay. And so we got to bend and, and twist on that a little bit. Sometimes, like I've had one major collaboration stolen from me, from mm -hmm. Charles Bibbs. We did a piece together that we published called Lady Locks. Uh -huh. And to this day, <laughs> Lady Locks is on his wall frame with a big old six inch frame and a big old mat. And, you know, he's my boy, so I can't fuss at him. All right. Uh, so the person that sends the paper original, ends up, they, get, they get it back after. They, they get it back, but they, but but they, that's not a rule because sometimes right. you, it might have to go back and forth a few times if it's not resolved. Exactly. And so the rule is when you think you're done, you sign it. In Lashawn's case, they all signed already, so all I gotta do is squeeze <laughs> something in on one side, and, uh, and I might send, send it back to him. Send those back to him. I'll probably send him pictures of them since we're uh, in different states and and get his thumbs up or thumbs down and then photograph him. So. We'll take before and after shots of most of the collaborations. I'm hoping the other artists will too. Okay. I, you know, I want to show you something. I found this. I found this. Hold on. And I wanted to, um, this was a piece I did a while ago, but I thought I would make a nice collaboration piece. You know, I started digging through stuff. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's a nice, you know who you should send that to? I already know who you're going to say. Deborah Shedrick. I know. I, that's exactly what I thought. She'd be I perfect thought I'm sending this to Deborah. Fantastic. That's a nice piece for her. Yeah. Cause so, and then I was like, what? I have some other pieces like this. And so, because I really love it. It's called, because when I did it, I did this a while ago and it was called Sisterhood. But she was the person that I thought about when I, when I pulled that out was Deborah. Cause I love what she does. Yeah, so, that's, that's a good matchup. And so that's another thing, too, is figuring out a matchup because all artists are not a good fit. I, 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 I'm I, going to uh, purge my soul here. <laughs> I have a piece that was given to me by Cynthia, the great Cynthia St. James. <laughs> 1996 is the date on that piece. Do you know that piece is still sitting in the corner over here? Oh. I just could not figure out what to do with it. It was so perfect. And it's got primary colors and her lines are so clean. And I yes. was just like, oh, what? Well, because her, her colors are, good. yeah, it's like, yeah, how do you heavy, make that? Yeah. Yeah, heavy primary, no texture, no mm -hmm. so. And but she's very, how, and she's a kind, it's kind of geometric. Very geometric. Right, so right. I'm a tougher, but her and Charles Bibbs make a good match. They mm -hmm. they blend it out. I think Charles just adorns what she does. So mm -hmm. that's that's what a collaboration is. And I think you'll see more of that happening in the, as this progresses. I think our regular people are all in the house. They look like they are ready to roll. Oh, so. they, they, they're making all kind of comments. We better post something up. We better post something up. They're making all kind of, uh, we got queen mother in the house. Hey queen. <laughs> we got uh, uh, Carol, uh, do I say her name right? I, I, I I'm, I'm not even sure if you're saying it right because I'm not going to say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to have to send us a, vo a voice thing. Uh, yeah. All right, Miss Johnson's so, in the house. How you doing, Miss Johnson? Miss Johnson's in the house mixing it up. What the Queen Mother say? That was sweet, Poncho. <laughs> oh, she said we compliment each other. We do. We got a good little a good little yin and yang thing happening. Oh, <laughs> uh, Linda thinks me sending that to Deborah is a good idea. Excellent idea. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to see what she would do, and she would take that on as a challenge. Mm -hmm. So on this subject, before we close off that subject of collaborations, I did air uh, a little early in the week a little uh -huh. short snippet of some collaborations that me and uh, Lashawn Beal has done in the past. Oh, so right. I'm show that right now.
And so me and uh, LaShawn are, are, are planning to extend that series you just saw. It's mostly mm -hmm. pencil drawings. I also sent some paper to you. To oh, no, I'm, I'm waiting, waiting forward to, for, you know, I woke up this morning, you know, Karen, I, Karen and I have talked quite a bit this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up this morning and I had this because yesterday I, you know, I broke out my palette knife. I'm being Deborah. I broke out my palette knife oh, too. Look at you! Look at you! That is fabulous. I, I broke out my palette knife. That. <laughs> I really love that. That's acrylic. This is my paint shirt, so I just painted it. Some okay, more. I'm gonna do my paint shirt too. I don't, yeah, I don't I think you're gonna look that My belly where my drawing table is, so I get <laughs> most of my paint on my shirt right in here. So I figured, why don't I just paint the whole thing? No, I love that. I love that. I love the way that happened. So. Um, you know, I did, I did my Deborah yesterday and I woke up this morning with the whole LaShawn flavor. So I'm going to get out, I'm going to get out a little easel, a little thing. And later on today, I'm going to LaShawn. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, we're going to get this party started and on the way, um, I got a, uh, what am I going to show you first? Well, here we go. We're just going to do it. That's not the one. Let me take me down. Go again. Day, uh, get what day are you on? Day 12, is it? Yeah, I'm in the office, a little studio, a little early today. Uh, decided to take a little small step away from the table for a little bit. Did some painting yesterday. Got my first uh, collaboration package in from Deborah Shutter today. And um, I also got a collaboration package from LaShawn Beal today. So more than likely, I'm going to work on a couple of those before I, I uh, get finished today. But uh, sometimes I get into my emails and doing all my mail stuff and seeing what's happening. And I'm clicking around right now trying to get the broadcast ready for tonight. Sometimes I have to test things out to see how they're working. I just did a time lapse of me yesterday all day, which I'm now looking at to see how that looks on screen. Um, you know, it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff happening and I'm being fast tracked to learn video editing, um, streaming and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, my background is in graphic design. I do a lot of um, stuff with the computer, but there's certain things I haven't ventured into with the computer. So uh, the quarantine is helping me kind of delve deeper into that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's just one of those kind of things where, you know, um, it's, it's always room to learn. Um, today I'm going to work a little bit on the computer just to unwind a little bit, take a little break, sit down for a second, gather my thoughts. I find that uh, working on the computer sometimes can help me um, kind of redirect my energies for a minute so I can redirect it back in. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, day 12. I think we move along great. Uh, the artists have fallen in. I've sent uh, a couple of packages to each one of the artists. I still got a few artists I want to reach um, to um, do collaborations. Uh, the group uh, is trying their best to raise connectivity a little more than what we have had. So we're trying to schedule some Zoom meetings so that we can all Kind of be on the same page. I'm a more or less be a listener at that that particular point because I already have a kind of in my mind how I see things uh, developing. Um, um, other than that, that's pretty much where I am. Uh, no heavy thoughts today. Most of the heavy thoughts I got, I've I've kind of dealt with already. I'm just at this point now trying to pick up my pace a little bit. Um, my energy level might be a little weird today, but other than that, I'm holding up pretty good. So I guess I'm going to go and do a little bit of computer work. And then that's going to be my presentation to you today. You know, sometimes when I get in here, days are kind of tough because you get a little bogged down in your process. So every now and then I like to come in here and just mess around on the computer. I'm uh, working on this piece here. 
you know, I, I love the whole notion of creating something from something that already exists. So I want just the notion of uh, being able to take some old elements I can tell you that what is very difficult is uh, trying to work on a computer and talk at the same time. <laughs> so I am just going to do my best at this. I am trying to create this image in my head that's been sitting for a minute. And uh, it's requiring me to do some patch up work because the actual piece that I got this from is rather old. It's an old magazine. Um, and I like going into old magazines. If you look, it's like it's pixelated and it's got some stuff happening here that I'm just going to, it's got some stuff going on here that for all intents and purposes needs to be cleaned up before I can do some of the things I want to do. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing the tedious job of um, touching this up, which can be a pain in the butt sometimes. So what I try to do is make sure things are continuous. Here's a page break in this from the photograph that I used. So I'm just trying to close some of those inconsistencies up. If I see something that needs to be cleaned up, I just go in and clean it up. Uh, because of what I'm going to do with this piece, um, I don't necessarily have to be... Um, get too clean but as you can see when I zoom up to this size that's another whole world down in there <laughs> and you might say well how do you know what to do with what hey I'm just feeling it out I am not a a, a pixel painter I says that's something I aspire to learn to do I am more of a image compositor so um, I tend to approach it more like collage than I do digital painting. Digital painting is something I really would like to learn how to do and plan to learn how to do in the next uh, phase of Larry Hunter Brown. So all I'm doing now is pretty much going in and got some things that need some cleaning up. Um, I got some things that's got some weird angles in it. see I want to merge that down there and so in this situation I'm working on a lot of layers and that allows me to have some level of control you know I'm trying to uh, clean up an area that's like real hard on my eyes but I am going to Merge that down. I'm just in here just making my own texture planes. I know a lot of artists that are very, very good at digital painting, digital compositing. Um, I aspire to be one of those people. But as you can see, it's very time consuming. So normally when I come in here, I'm like, not trying to be too specific. In this case, I, I came over here so that I would not uh, to get away from the bogged down days that I've been uh, 
doing. So the whole goal here is to stimulate myself into doing something a little bit different. Um, but I've been working on this piece for a minute and I want to finish it up. So right now I'm just feeling what doesn't feel right. Bracing some things out, putting some things in. Um, as you can see, I got a head of locks here that I'm trying to uh, clean up. And in that process, I am trying to just smooth this out a little bit. You know, if I see areas that need to be brought up, I just borrow something from one place and put it in another place. I'm just trying to add some of those textures back in. As you can see up close, you can see the pixelization in the photograph. And sometimes I like to play with that a little bit because everything I change in this environment um, kind of gives me a little bit more creative control and I can actually reauthor a pre-existing photograph. This photograph was found in a magazine, a very old magazine, and I like the movement in it. And I said, well, what am I going to do with that? Can I come up with something creative with that? So that's what I'm embarking on. Just trying to um, play around with the image, see what areas look interesting, um, get rid of anything that's an eye obstruction, you know, and then um, fool the eye into believing that what I'm doing is real. <laughs> that sounds like about right. That's what I'm doing. So I am working on the layer now of uh, her hair. It is a her, and I am trying to um, play this up a little bit. I like some of those curls, so... I know her hair doesn't necessarily look African-American, but I think for the kind of image I'm striving for, um, it doesn't have to. As you can see, if I want to really nap that up, I can. At this um, height, and know it looks really crazy. And you're probably saying, what is he actually doing? Um, but I am just trying to um, swoop out the image a little bit. So I can have a little bit more control over certain things that's happening in this picture. I am using what's known as a rubber stamp and I'm taking a, I got a little seam in it going down the center of it. Sometimes the, the old photographs I have have folds in it. It might have, might have been two pages originally and I'm condensing it to one. So I'm just getting rid of that line. Um, you guys probably can't see that from where I am, but I can see it. So I'm just dying it down a little bit by taking at pattern areas from one place and moving them. And um, just enough to play with it. I like that, that little curl right there that's happening in that hair, but I'm gonna take a piece of that and replace it because it looked like it dropped out so I can replace things I can add things that is the wonderful thing about the computer environment if you got patience and it's only limited by your patience because I personally to be honest I don't have a lot of patience I can only do a certain amount in a certain amount of time after that I'm just cleaning up some of this edge of this lock over here on the side and um, yeah, so I try not to labor, but I know artists that can spend hours, I mean, literally hours doing the kind of stuff that I'm doing right now. And I don't have that attitude. So I think at some point you got to know your limitations. <laughs> and I definitely know mine. I have a threshold 
And after that threshold is over, it's done. But uh, right now, I'm liking uh, where things are going. I guess you, I'll give you kind of a reveal of what I'm doing in a few minutes. I'm just trying to clean this up a little bit, get rid of some of the stuff that's uh, nagging me, opening it up a little bit. Actually, some of these dots are going to help me with this image as I go along. So I'm not going to take all of them out. Gives it a nice graphic look, too. But I can clean some of that up. If I decide that piece right there is too frayed, I want to make it rounder, I can round it off. So I'm actually using the eraser. I'm using a couple other things. I could take things out. Those dots in the middle, I'm not going to worry about. I think they're going to give me some detail later on when I get into this situation. So this is what I'm doing today. This is my release. This is my, hey, I've been in the paint for 12 days. So let's uh, let's go walk into something a little bit different. So that's what I'm attempting to do today. Um, this lady, I'm planning to do a whole series of these. They're going to be pretty celestial looking. Um, I want to do something that looks a little, a little, a little different. Some Afrofuturism kind of stuff, if it will allow me to do that. Um, so yeah, right now that's what I'm doing. I guess I can smooth that out too. It's not such a hard line on the edge. I'm sure that other artists have. And the thing about the computer world is that other artists have all kinds of ways they do what they do. Like that area right there that's rough. I like that. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to take that out. Okay. Do. And I'm just going to take that little area right there. I like that. And I'm going to put that all the way up. Instead of smoothing it out all the way, I'll make some of it rough. You see, I can, so I got some control over how I want certain things to feel. My sharp line and pull out so you guys see what's happening. So I'm just creating this wave of hair and uh, I'm trying to maintain it as much as I can. So this piece is going to be big. It's about 40 inches in height. All right. So let me pull this back. View on screen. So that's kind of where I am so far. I'm trying to smooth some of this out on this layer. Um, I got a bunch of stuff happening in here. So. I'm going to put this above and I'm going to give you a clue to what I'm trying to do here. So I have a background already incorporated into this piece. Um, try to see if I can. Uh, and so this is a layer I've been working on trying to clean up. Uh, it's actually going to go on top of this one. I found a profile face that I wanted to use, um, but, you know, it wasn't really doing what I needed it to do. So I'm just going to play around with this a little bit till I get it kind of where I want it. Sometimes doubling up on images, too, you can get a nice effect. But I found a picture of a lady that I like, Caucasian lady. And um, right now, I'm just trying to uh, get rid of some of the stuff that I don't want. So I'm going to take my eraser out and get rid of some of this down here. So she is... Uh, being used as my model for right now, the 
because I, she was in the position I needed her in. So sometimes I find a bunch of pictures that I composite. Um, so I went in and I did found another face that I liked. And I put that in there. So she's kind of in there. So I want to move her in place. I want her like right in there. And so I got actually three layers there. I took some, I have some, found some other photographs of, uh, didn't want to use this narrow neck and Caucasian looking neck. So um, I have uh, another neck that I'm going to put in place. And uh, I got to move some little things around, but. Trying to close up that space a little bit. I'm still working the layers. So I'm just showing you how I'm compositing this face. Uh, I might use a different eye on her. Um, but those are all the layers I'm working on so far. And then my next step is probably going to be I got some little cleanup I need to do down here. I'm going to erase some of that out. Get me a big eraser this time. I'm going to take all of that out and see where is that at. Get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm working on the background of this right now. Trying to get this where I want it. Piece of that neck that is getting on my nerves. So um, I'm getting ready to come out of here now and take a little small break so that it won't drive me crazy. But this is it, the whole thing together. And then I'm probably going to work on um, putting a moon or a planetary thing happening. This is a background that I painted. Um, and so this is um, the working piece that I'm working on right now. So you can see what my process is when I'm working on the computer. So until I do some more to this, this is where I am. And this is where I'm going to take a break. So now you see what it's like being in the world of the computer every now and then. I use it a lot. I have a lot of equipment around here. I have a G Clay machine. I use Photoshop. I use Illustrator. I use um, InDesign for doing graphic design. I'm currently working on my 40 for perspective book. So that's uh, something that I'm always working on. We design our own catalogs and that side of stuff. All the graphics and stuff you see online, I basically had, uh, I've done most of that. Uh, and that's not to say that I don't have designers that I work with because I have a lot of designers that I work with, too, so that I don't have to undertake the burden of doing it myself. Um, so, yeah, day 12. Wow. The time is rolling. I'm sitting here now just reflecting and going, wow. Am I going to have enough time to do some of the stuff I said I was going to do? Uh, but I'm glad the collaboration works are coming in because I need the kind of a little reprieve right now. But the computer is a great way for me to unwind. And I think that if you are out there have a, a computer, just get yourself Photoshop and play around with it a little bit. They got so many nice programs you can use on the computer, on your laptop. Procreate. I have one called Paper. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys how Paper works on one of my uh, um um, presentations. Um, Sheba Meyer is like the master of um, digital painting. I got a couple artists that I know that are very, very good at that. Um, me, I'm a little bit of an old timer, so I got to learn that part. Um, but looking forward to, to embracing it too. So with that being said, y'all, day 12, we are in the mood.
Hey, hey, hey. Hey, how's it going? I really it's enjoyed that. Now, will you take that and uh, when you finish that, um, you'll print it and then you'll work on it? Or are you just, it's just going to be a digital? This is all digital. So I'll either print it on paper or glass or acrylic. Okay. I might even print it on metal. It depends on what material looks best. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do that in your own studio, print on no, metal? No, uh, the paper I do here, the canvas I do here, um, if, depending on the size, I might have to farm it out. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of the other materials and substrates, I have to send that out to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a lot, lot of good for photography companies online that do acrylic and metal printing now. I think that would look really super on metal, though. Oh, yeah, it would be hot on metal. Have mm -hmm. like, but it would be even better than that on acrylic because acrylic gives it another a dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on metal, they print on top of it, but the um, acrylic, they, they print behind it. Oh, okay. Okay. So you get a different effect for, from both of them. Oh, well, I can't wait to see. I want to see what those look well, like. Well, that's what we are all up to. What you got for me today? Well, I did do a uh, technique video. Uh, I don't want to full screen it. Look at, look at my face. Look yeah, at my, there, there I, I go would. again. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sleepy. Let me advance it a little bit so I don't look sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> you said I am not sleepy. <laughs> Get another attitude on it. There it is. That's that's there you go. There we go. So <laughs> um, I did a technique video, and this is basically uh, going through tie dye. I mean, not tie dye, but gilding. So we'll play that. All right. I'll start from the beginning. Hey, how's it going? So we're going to talk a little bit about gilding today. Um, I know I wasn't on the other day. Why you look young going here? <laughs> what you trying to say? I think you I think you done reached back and found something from back in the day. I'm always fine. It's because I'm in the studio. <laughs> we can't hear you, babe. I this was up pretty hot loud. Put your microphone near something, baby. I'll put the microphone near. You need some sound. Okay, wait a minute. Let's see. You always whisper. You Why are you always whispering? That. I'll, let me put the microphone in. Why are you always whispering? But that's just it. I was talking fairly loud. There we go. Hold on. As you can see right in here. I'm that's a little better. And that's just me talking. That I'm doing on Mother of All. And, um, and actually, it's going to go throughout this entire thing. So it's going to I'm going to bring this down. Actually, complete this particular piece. I know some people are like, oh, are you going to be done with that in a month? That's better. Uh, because I have to put down metal leaf on all of these little areas. And I have to be really careful because I don't want to do metal leaf in the colors. So I have to kind of take a little bit more time um, and get it around. And I know I'm thinking maybe I should have gilded it and then painted it, but that. Such is life, the decisions we make. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go through this particular piece and I'm going to show you some of the materials that are used with gilding and um, how I go about actually applying the metal leaf and basically what I use um, to apply onto this is what's called a size, which is a glue but it's not like your regular glue where it just dries and then you're done. The size actually dries and it's tacky. And then the tackiness is what you adhere your, um, the tackiness is what you adhere your um, metal leaf to. So I'm gonna bring that up so you can see me a little bit better. And then over here on this table, I have all of the materials that I wanna show you because you have to actually use size, different sizes for different things. Like um, when I glue to wood and paper, I use a water-based size. But when I glue, when I do gilding on uh, metal, I use an oil-based size. So it's a little different. Um, but that took some learning. I didn't, I didn't just discover that overnight. I <laughs> did that way. I had to do my, my research and things like that. So we're going to start over here on this table. 
um, with the different um, with the different sizes and things like that. Um, like this right here, this is a water-based size, and this particular size I use, like I said, this is a water-based size, so I can use this on paper, you can use it on wood, you can use it on any of those kind of things. Um, this particular one I didn't care for too much because it was just too watery and it just took way too many coats. Um, but the other one, how I originally started was I would get this brand of size. This is the um, Old World Art size um, and then uh, the Mona Lisa uh, one I would get. But then after a while, I stopped because I was using so much of it. These were just way too tiny. So I actually began to get the uh, larger containers because I do use, I use a lot of size. So I get a larger container. So I order from um, another a, a company and um, that way I'm able to get large containers of size. And this right here is a super, it's called super thick because some sizes are not real incredibly thick. It's a thinner size, like that's a thinner size. And sometimes this is a thinner size. This is another size that I picked up. This is one I picked up, I think, at Hobby Lobby. It's okay. I don't use it much, but, you know, it's there in a pinch. Um, but as you can see, I don't think I'll need the pinch. But the other thing about size is it will dry out on you. So if you don't have the proper... <laughs> If you don't have a proper container to hold it after you open it, because it's like anytime you open something, it starts evaporating or drying. And so size will dry out on you. It will dry out on you. And I find that um, just about everything. So I use um, like Rubbermaid containers. I love when I find these at the thrift store, I buy them because this is, um, I'll tell you what this is too. Um, this is a red base coat, and I buy I buy that pretty big too because this is it's right here. So I buy my red base coat pretty big too um, because I don't want to run out of it. And as you can see, I'll turn you around. I do a lot of gilding. If you look at my work, um, so you can see I do a lot of gilding. And if you know anything about my work, I'm gonna bring you turn you guys around. So you can see I do a lot of gilding. That whole wall, all of those pieces are gilded over there. And then there's some other ones over there. So I do a lot of, I gild a lot of my work. Um, so having these large containers, and there's even more. I mean, I gild even um, like these pieces here. I'll show you. This particular piece is gilded too. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see his pants and the ones over there. So I build a lot of my work. So having a large container of metal leaf is woohoo a great idea and also base coat. And I'll tell you the story. Um, when I originally started doing metal leaf, I was, um, we had gone to Paris and we went to the Louvre and we'd been there a couple of times. And this particular time we visited the Italian Renaissance section and that's when I discovered I wanted to start trying to put my, I wanted to start gilding my work. So I was like, ooh, I'm gonna start gilding because I love this. I love the halos. I loved all of the, the simplistic grandeur it gave. Um, it gave this beautiful illusional effect of simplistic grandeur. So when I got back home, I'm like, I'm gonna start gilding my paintings. They were very simplistic at the time. And so I thought, I'm going to start gilding them. I'm going to put metal leaf on them and all of that kind of stuff. So I get home and I'm working on watercolor paper here, not uh, canvas, not anything that's already sealed. This is watercolor paper. Super, super, super absorbent. So I get back and I go and buy all my materials. I'm going to gild now. I go and buy all my materials and I'm starting out and I'm putting down the size, not thinking, not knowing I need a base coat or any of that stuff. I didn't do that much research. So I start putting the size down and I'm like, oh my God, this isn't going to work. All this stuff is getting absorbed. And so I was ended up putting like uh, size down, size down, size, just tons of size down because it was just absorbing every single time. And so I ended up like putting down a lot of size. I'm like, this is not working here at all. And so eventually <laughs> I figured it out that 
you have to seal the watercolor paper and then lay the size on top. And I found that out by using color and also a base coat. And so that's where the red comes in. And I love using the red anytime I use gold and then I use a, like a blue paint or something if I'm using silver because it just makes the silver pop. And so I like having those two colors underneath different colors. And then I like using the red on the copper because it makes the copper pop. So you'll learn that different colors make different metal leaves pop and make them like just like bam and so those are the things that i've learned in different colors that i've learned to put underneath and so your base coat can be an actual um base coat that you buy which is this right here or it could be like a really nice paint that kind of seals if you're working on watercolor paper but I, I tend to use base coat even when I'm using wood or things like that. Even if I've sealed the wood and all that kind of stuff, I still like to use the base coat because the base coat kind of is my guide to of where I want to put the metal leaf. So think about that when you're doing it. So we're going to, so those are the, these are the things that I use um, a base coat. Once I'm finished done painting, I'm going to add the leaf. I use a base coat and then after the base coat dries, then I put the size down. And you can, like I said, you can get different kinds of size. There is a thinner size, and then there is a super thick. I use the super thick because I don't want to have to go over it a billion times. So I do use the super thick. But always remember that size will dry out on you. As a matter of fact, I, mean, I let this, I just let this dry out way too much. Look at that. I think I showed you guys. Look at this. But I'm still able to use it. I put some water in it. And so I'm still using, you know, I'm still getting there using that size. Um, but even in this Tupperware container, you can see how much the size dried out. But I've had this for, I don't know, like a year in this container. So I still, I'm still able to use it. Whereas this right here, this is not going to dry out. So what, a lot of times what I do with this really watery size is I put it in and mix it with my really thick size and that helps with um with it thinning out so sometimes I just mix it so I'll buy it because I can mix it with my other size so the other thing is I do I gild on metal uh, because I gild on my bronze pieces which are here this is a bronze piece so this is a bronze and when I first started gilding on bronze, I was using the water-based size. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. It does not work. Ba, ba, ba. No, it doesn't work. Do not use a water-based size. You have to use this right here is, um, you have to also use, this is an oil-based base coat too. You use an oil-based base coat and you use an oil-based size. This is the size that you use for um, metal, do not use water-based size on metal. It's not a good idea. So, um, and I didn't open it because I'm not using it right here now. Because if I open it, it'll dry out. So I don't want to. I don't want to start the drying process. I'm not saying it'll like poof dry and you're done. It doesn't dry like that. But um, since I don't do a lot of my metal. I'm not doing a lot of metal right now. I won't open it, but I have it. And this also, you see, I don't have a big container of it because I don't use a lot on there. I'm going to show you, like, if you look over, let's see, where is it? If you look right here, right there, you'll see that right there is gilded, that particular bronze. If you look right there, that particular bronze piece is gilded. So that's a 23 karat gold. And I got a bronze piece over there, but this is a 23 karat gold over here. Um, I like doing those in 23 karat gold, 24 karat gold, because you can put them outdoors. It can still go outdoors in that gold setting. Um, anything less than that, you can't put it outside. So this particular piece is done in the 23 karat gold and it can still go outside. Most people are like, I'm not putting that outside. Totally understand because I wouldn't put it outside either, but you have the option if you'd like to put it outside. I like to give people that kind of option. I don't know if they want to put it outside. So we're going to look at some metal leaf now. So I'm going to push these back.
So those are all materials. And then somebody asked me the other day if I seal my work, and I do. I seal my work. I do use a sealer. This right here is a small one, but I normally buy a really large metal leaf sealer. Um, you can seal it with, um, what is it, like a gel medium and things like that, but I always seal it with a regular uh, metal leaf sealer. I just believe in using um, the proper materials for the proper thing. So I use a metal leaf sealer. So I'm going to look at some metal leaf because metal leaf comes in lots and lots and lots of color. And I like, um, I like getting a lot of color. I like using a lot of color. Oh, hey, Karen. I like using a lot of color and I like um, just experimenting with different colors and different things. And as you can see, this right here, you see this crown. I did this crown recently, but I, did, I also did, um, I did some resin on it. I found this out in my, um, out near the creek in my backyard and I used metal leaf on it. And so this is all a um, 23 karat gold and it's also resin, but I'm not sure if I'm done with it yet. So that's why it's still just kind of hanging around, but I call it Take Me to the King. And I, cause it just looks like a crown when I found it, it was a beautiful piece of uh, just dried wood and I treated it, cleaned it, and then I metal leafed it and I resined it. So it's pretty neat, I think so. So we're gonna put that over there. And so we're gonna go through and look at, just look at, some different metals, um, different metal leaf and metal leaf pattern. And I order a lot of metal leaf. I order from a place called LA Gold. Sometimes I'll order off, um, sometimes I'll order off, it, uh, what is it, um, Amazon, because I can get it in a bulk, the Dutch metal, not the 23 karat gold. I'll order some Dutch metal. So the difference in sizes, so I'll show you. This right here is huge. And I used to get these at like different stores for a lot less. Can you <laughs> tell me which one you want me to send you? And so um, I used to get these at the store for a lot less, but now it is so expensive to buy these in like a regular store. I just order all of my metal leaf online because the regular stores are charging way too much money. So as you can see, I have, um, I have a lot, I do, I have a lot of metal leaf and I do because I buy a lot of, I buy a lot of metal leaf and, and that's because I like using, um, I don't like to not have what I need when I need it. So, but before I show you the metal leaf, I'm going to show you some of the brushes I use. Like, you have to varnish, you have to varnish your metal leaf and when you put it down. So this, and this is just a brush that I have at home, but I use it as my varnishing brush. I love this brush. It's all one size. And so when I brush off the leaf, this is a great brush for that. This right here is my gilding brush. So I don't always have to use this. Um, whatever. You <laughs> I don't always have to use this brush for this bigger metal. I don't. This is a Dutch metal. It probably has copper and zinc and all that kind of stuff in it. And you can pick this up and it won't. You know, it's like this is very. You can pick it up. It's 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 light as a feather, but that it won't break or tear on you. Um, this is another brush that I use um, to pick up metal leaf to move it around. But I tell you, this stuff will blow away. Uh, but mostly, I use these two brushes when I'm using. And it's easier for me to put it on there. Now you can get metal leaf where it's already attached to the paper, which is great. I use that too, but I don't like that as much. That's you can get the 23 karat gold. It's already and it comes on individual sheets, and it doesn't come off until you attach it to the size, and then you just take the paper off. 
Now that's great if that's the kind of, if that's what you like, but I find that sometimes it doesn't stick quite like you want it to stick. And so I'd rather have it in loose leaf. So 23 karat gold and 21 karat gold comes in sheets of this size. You can see the difference. Look at that. <laughs> Crazy, right? This is the size sheets that 23 karat gold and white gold come in versus Dutch metal, things like that. They come in that one. And they come in little tiny um, flat sheets. And I do, like for me, I, I am, you know, I use it very sparingly, very sparingly. So like with this right here, I'm like, glop, 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 glop it all on. <laughs> but when it comes to my 23 year old white gold, I'll cut it in little strips and put it in one at a time um, so that I don't, uh, I'm very conscious of waste because gold is sold at um, gold metal, 23 karat gold and all of those are sold at gold prices. So sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, um, but either way, it's still going to be expensive. The gold, um, the gold metal leaf, the pure gold metal leaves are expensive and so is the white gold so um and this is like the white gold is the 12 karat white gold but you're still going to pay some pretty good money for your white gold and your 23 karat gold so i normally buy those at the um, la gold because la gold sells everything and that's what i love i don't have to hunt around but like i said if you're going to buy any of those goals, they're going to be um, at gold prices. The other thing is that I like to buy an LA gold. Like this is a copper. I love copper. So I buy a lot of copper. As you can see, I buy a lot of copper because I love using it on, especially my male pants. I like anytime I do a male, I like to use copper on, on I call them my male pants. I like to use copper. My favorite, my absolute favorite pattern is it's a it's a uh, uh i call it the sunburst pattern and i used to be able to find the sunburst pattern anywhere this is a part of the sunburst pattern i don't know if you can see it i'm going to show you that's a part of the sunburst pattern and i used to be able to find the sunburst pattern everywhere and then all of a sudden you could find it nowhere at all so now I have to hunt down the sunburst pattern, but LA Gold every now and then they will carry the sunburst pattern. But you can see if you look like this is, I call this my treasure trove of, you know, I have a dawn, I have greens. Um, this right here is, this is a sterling silver. Now I used to use a lot of sterling silver, but if you know anything about sterling silver, it tarnishes. <laughs> and so sterling silver will come in the large sheets as well. But look at what happens to sterling silver after it sits for a while. It tarnishes. But what I found is I actually like that tarnished color. So I will use that on certain pieces because I actually like the tarnish color. Um, I actually like the tarnish color. So I will, I still use the 23 karat gold because I like to have that burnt edge. And then what I'll do is I will go in later and put a white gold. Look how beautiful that tarnish color is. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? I think it's gorgeous. So I will use the um, sterling silver because I do like the the look of the tarnished color once it's tarnished. So you can use that. So I do use a sterling silver and the sterling silver you can still get in the large sheets, but you have to order them. You can't pick them up. I used to be able to get these at stores, but you can't get them at stores. Here is a Starburst right here. And this is my absolute favorite. Uh, favorite one because I love, I just love the Starburst and I love using the Starburst on so many things, so many things. So I normally use the red Starburst and the blue Starburst. And now I'm finding I have several blue Starbursts that I didn't know because I have so many packs of 
<laughs> and you can find copper. Um, you can find copper just about anywhere. This this is a copper packet I've had for a long time. But now I just buy it. Um, this is a green, which is pretty as well. Um, that's a Starburst green pattern. I don't use green a lot, but I like having it. This is a neat pattern too. So these are some of the patterns that if you go to the stores, you might be able to find these at the store. Here's the red Starburst right here. There's a red Starburst. So you might be able to find these patterns. See that, that's red. I love these. Starbursts are a lot of fun. So you might be able to find um, a lot of these patterns. You won't be able to find the Starburst in the stores. Um, but you might be able to find some of these other patterns. There are patterns that you can find in the store. Um, but I find that most of my patterns, I find them at LA Gold. I go to LA Gold. The other thing that I buy is, let me see if I can find it. They're packs. They're just random packs of leaf all squished together and sometimes i use those and i'll just put them there's a 20 see that's 23 karat gold so you can buy it like i bought it like this but this is actually from a store um i can't remember what store i bought it from but you can see it's still just the tiny pack so and i'm glad i found that because i didn't think i'd have enough for this piece <laughs> so you can find the 23 karat gold at different stores but like i said most of the time when i buy 23 karat gold i buy it um and uh offline now this right here is nice because this is just a flake these are all flakes so if you ever want to just use a bunch of flakes you can buy just a pack of gold leaf flakes now i don't have to buy flakes because i make them I say once I start taking them off, uh, you know, once you start varnishing and everything starts dropping, I put them in little containers like this. And if you look in, in here, it's got all kinds of flakes in them because I save all of my flakes. And the reason I do that is because sometimes I might have to patch something here and there. This right here, you can see it. If you look in here, it has flakes all in it. So I make all, once all my flakes start dropping, I put them in here. Now, these, now I'm gonna show you some really interesting color patterns. This is another copper that I have. This is a color pattern right here. Now these are all Dutch metals and they're called variegated metal. This is all variegated metal. And you can see how neat the colors are. So that's a variegated metal. This right here is a Dutch metal, and this is not sterling silver. This is just a Dutch metal silver. This will not tarnish. This will not tarnish on you at all. You can put this on anything, and it'll stay pretty much that color silver. Now, I don't use silver a lot, not this kind of silver. Now, I will use the white gold, and I will use the sterling silver, but I don't use just the Dutch metal silver that often um so let's let me show you some of the really neat patterns that you can get um online so this right here is a really cool pattern that i like a lot and this is this is basically a variegated metal it's called a variegated metal and what it is is a heat treated they heat treat these metals to create these patterns. So this is a heat treated metal and that's how the patterns create. So that's one pattern and I love that pattern. And so I like buying different variegated leaf patterns and different variegated leaf colors. So you can see I bought several of those patterns and I do, I'll buy like different patterns and buy several of those. Now this right here is a really fun pattern and I think I have one open, I do. This is a really fun pattern. And what I love about LA Gold is that they have so many really, really fun patterns. So here's a really fun and funky pattern. It has rings, it's like circle rings, which is really cool. So as you can see, there's so many really cool patterns. Let me shoot. So many really cool patterns that you can buy offline and in so many different colors till you end up just going crazy, just crazy. Now this right here, hold on, let's get this this color and then let me show you what this 
this big giant box is. So here's another pattern, which I thought was kind of neat, this pattern. But this is a pattern that you can actually get at any store. This pattern, this is it. This pattern you can pretty much get at any store that you want. So that actually came from a store, I think. And a lot of times when I want to buy in bulk, like I'll buy Dutch metal gold in bulk. So I'll buy like a hundred sheets and you can buy that online and it'll come. This, yeah, this is gold. So this is a Dutch metal gold and I just bought this big entire box of it because I use the Dutch metal gold a lot and this is too. But bear in mind, it is different colors. So when you buy it, you definitely want to make sure that you're using similar batches. I'm trying to see, I think these two are the same color. But when you buy it, the, the goals are not always the same. So definitely when you're using it, make sure you use the same batch because you'll end up with a lighter gold and a darker gold or this kind of gold and then that kind of gold. So definitely make sure that when you use your gold that I'm trying, I'm trying to see if I can find, um, cause it's happened to me before where I've had two different kinds of gold. So just make sure that you use the gold from the exact same batch because a lot of times the golds are not the same. The color, the um, the color might be darker on one and lighter on another. So you want to definitely make sure. And it, it you can't. It doesn't look like you can see the difference, but there is a difference in the gold. So just make sure that whatever gold you buy, you use that same exact. Um, you use that same exact one on each of your whatever you're doing just use that same batch don't switch batches because you'll have different colored goals in um so and then in here i have some silver this is the dutch metal silver that i have in here so you can see there's lots and lots and lots of patterns this is a fun pattern right here this is square because i just want to show you all the really cool patterns that you can get now mind you these this isn't something that you would use see that this is not something that you would use on metal because this is all dutch metal i mean you can use it on metal but not if you're going to put it outside i wouldn't use this if you're going if it's going to go outside do not use this metal um for outside use at all because and then see that's the red i showed you the blue but that's the red isn't that beautiful pretty yeah that's the red and then here's another neat pattern you just, i just have a huge box i don't know you can't see it i'm sorry i have huge boxes just boxes and boxes of metal leaf <laughs> just boxes and boxes and this is a really neat one too i bought this one in la gold this one you see that isn't that a beautiful pattern so a lot of the patterns you can find in the store and that differs from the pattern that you can find in the store this is the pattern you can find in the store and this is the one you order online it's a different pattern it may not look so different you're like well louise that doesn't look very different trust me it is different so let's see what else we have down here we have some more copper and so i have i store this in all kinds of like little containers. I have bits and pieces that I save. Like these are bits and pieces that I'll save because I don't throw, I try not to throw pieces out if I don't have to. So I'll save bits and pieces here and there just so that I can use them later because I never know what I'm going to run out. So this is not even all of it. I still have more boxes of metal leaf because I never know what colors I'm going to use and I never know what colors I'm going to want. Here's a different, this is a little different pattern too. This pattern is pretty cool. Look at this pattern. So I just wanted to show you like all of the really cool patterns that you can find. Um, you're not just stuck with just like the basic patterns that you find in the store. You can order some really cool patterns online 
in metal leaf and you can order them in reds you can order them in greens you can order them in blues you can order them in so many different colors hold on let me see here we go i want to show you this i really like this one it's just like all over the place all over the place color which is fun um that's a fun color so but as you can see i do i have all kinds of colors and um, I have those in red and I have those in blue and I love in the squares also are in red and blue. So different colors to work with. And then I just leave them. They're just all in here. And so whenever I want to use them. So these are all uh, different ones. So I try to keep them in a box until I use them. And then when I use them, they're just everywhere. Everything's kind of up for grabs. <laughs> Once I use them, everything is up for grabs all over the house. Well, not all over the house. Sometimes you should see my studio. My entire studio floor is literally covered in metal leaf, especially when I'm making some of my bigger pieces. I just have metal leaf all over the entire house. So you can see all of the, and this is not even like, the most, uh, the bulk of it, I have, I still have other boxes and containers of metal leaf um, floating around. So I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the different metal leaves and the different brushes. Um, normally when I'm doing, when I'm gilding, I just, I can throw these away. Um, normally when I'm doing gilding, I just use um inexpensive brushes because even though it's a water-based paint you don't all you can't always get it out of the brush so i just use inexpensive brushes and i just keep a bunch of inexpensive brushes around just for that purpose so that i can um use them and you need to use like if you're going to use brushes um, I use something like this when I'm painting larger areas, and then I use really, really small, tiny brushes to get into some of the smaller areas. So you can use any inexpensive brush. I like buy giant sets of inexpensive brushes because these are the kind I like. Um, this is a synthetic brush, but it also is a uh, this particular synthetic brush, they, these are a smoother brush, so it goes on pretty smoothly. And then I do use, um, sometimes if I don't want to throw my brushes out, I'll use a cleaner, whether it's turpenoid or something like that, and just leave them sitting in some turpenoid. Sometimes I forget and then it's over. It's just over because it all dries out. The turpenoid dries out, the brush dries out, everything. But that's what... <laughs> It helps. It works. So, but that's one of the things that you can do. And I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of gilding and how I go about doing it and the materials that I use when I'm doing gilding, because I do quite a bit of gilding. So if you have any questions, let me know, because I'm always here for you. Bye. Looking pretty hot, man. Looking pretty hot. Is that right? I just did that part this morning. <laughs> I can tell by the polka dot robe. <laughs> it's the polka, polka dot robe action right there. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. I really love the gold. It's really, 
Um, shaping up really nice, lady. Yes, yes. I'm really, really, really enjoying that. Um, it's, you know, hey, we got Kathleen in the house. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right on time. I caught your interview, Kathleen. Uh huh. Yeah, because uh, Rosemary sent the interview and I, I got a chance to listen to it. I can't hear you. Are you turned down? Just barely. It's spotty. It's me. It's, yeah. Pancho, can you hear her? I can't hear her. Um, I would just log out and log back in again and see if it changes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right. Be all right. Be How do you like my Let me tell you this. Um, you know, after watching you in that last presentation. How do you like my ring? I think your ring is awesome. You got a ring thing you've been working all week. First it was the square, now you got the circle. I'm checking you out. But to get back to your leaf thing, that is a powerful collection of leaf you got going on there. I know. You want me to send you some too? I always take some leaf, baby. Oh, Karen, Karen, Karen popped on because you know I did that live yesterday. And Karen popped on and was like, send me some. <laughs> Hey, Kathleen's sound is not so great today. Yeah. It's almost like she's on a different machine. Now, Kathleen, do you just have one thing open or two things open? Mm-hmm. And you have your volume up? Mm. Well, you know, this that's part of the quirky land of broadcasting. Some days that's we have a part of live, Kathleen. We have excellent connections some days, not so excellent the next days. Um, Kathleen, I would just try to log off and log in one more time. And if right. not, we'll try it another time. And then just take your and try your and look at your cam mic and make sure it's right. It's on the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's odd. Well, you know, that's part of this whole thing. Dude. We don't know what, what happens behind the scenes of this stuff. Right. So I'm going to share something while we're waiting for her to get ready to do her thing. I think that Miss uh, Deborah Shedrick did some shopping. So oh. we're going to show a little bit of her shopping spree. Oh, I have to post my shopping. Look at her. You would never know she was a world-class artist. Look at it. She got, she got a cameraman. With their finger in the way. <laughs> yeah, with their finger in the screen. And it's vertical. <laughs> but that's right, y'all. This is real, y'all. This is real live. We are not prof professional videographers, but we are making sure you guys see what's really going down. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what store that is. It looks like Staples. I know. Is that an art store? Those big? Yeah, that must be That's like a Michaels. Hunt. That's Michaels. It's Michaels. Uh huh. That's Michaels. Look at that big bag she got. She's ready I know. to go. You know she's shopping or she's lifting. Yeah, I did. It might be a mixture of the two. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are you shopping or lifting, girl? She's putting the glasses on. Ah, that's my section. I'm just trembling looking at it. Because <laughs> you haven't gone yet. No, I haven't. It's going to be, I'm going to do it before Friday. Uh-huh. I got to find me a cameraman, though. Oh, you're going to get you a cameraman, too. Yeah, I just need somebody to shadow me for a minute. Uh -huh. I need two hands for this. Uh-huh. Look at yeah, her. I just, had, I just had the people in the store. So, I, love, I love to see what artists buy. So she likes to buy the small tubes, huh? Uh 
It's like uh, candy. Like, look, look at me. I'm, my, my neck is itching like a crackhead. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just see in the like, store. Here you go. Here you go. In the, <laughs> can I can I get one of those? <laughs> uh, in case you are uh, looking and you don't understand what's happening, uh, part of this uh, creative quarantine Springfield, we got a loan. Uh, not a loan. A grant. Mm -hmm. from uh, TDI Mass Development mm -hmm. and a, a pretty mm -hmm. substantial grant. So the artists were able to have a $500 shopping spree. So what you see here is artists mm -hmm. having fun. I'm mm -hmm. going to do my shopping spree before the week is out. Doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. What else did I come in here for? <laughs> I see she's using a lot of paint on them pants. That's what I was going to say. She got on her paint pants. She showed up for real. She must be lugging her gun in that bag, though. It looked heavy <laughs> already. It looked heavy already, and she ain't even left the store yet. She hasn't even thrown stuff in it yet. She is in oh, it. Oh, the canvas section. Uh -huh. The canvas section. Jeez. Oh, she's in the brushes. Let me see if we if how uh how you feel how you sounding Kathleen. Well, since the sound is not good, I guess we'll just keep you on the screen and watch you work for a while. Right. Yeah, we can watch her work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we can't your 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 sound is still bad for today. Mm -hmm. But we can definitely we're lip reading right we'll, now. We'll watch you work. We'll watch your hands work and watch you at your machine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, the palette knife that's section. Ah. That's because she be wearing them palette knives my, out. My, my palette knives look really jacked up. <laughs> Mine down because I hadn't used them in a while. Uh-oh, she's putting some stuff back. She must be being a very economical shopper. See, I would have emptied the whole shelf off. See, I'm I'm be, I was being very economical. Uh I was looking at your leaf collection and I find it very hard to believe. <laughs> you hear what she just said? I got enough canvas at home. Mm -hmm. That's how I was. Look at <laughs> I know she was gonna hit that clearance section. <laughs> That's a nice size clearance section. It is. Mine, do, I do not have a clearance and, and, and we haven't, and we haven't seen one person in the store but her yet. <laughs> That's because you know she's a, a renowned artist. They cleared it out. Yeah, she's in uh, Montgomery, Alabama. They were like, the boar is coming. Look at that. There's yeah. nobody there. Yeah, there is nobody in that store. <laughs> it's hardly a cashier there. It's like, I want to know what time she went to this store. Look at it. She got right in line, too. I'm telling you, they cleared out the store for her. So this is Michaels. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know my Michaels. <laughs> so uh, for those of you out here who really can't... Um, understand that the look at our faces we're just grinning and we're not even in the store <laughs> we're just enjoying the shopping artists love going to the art supply store it's like um it's like a kid going through a toy store for real yep mm -hmm. especially when you got money exactly somebody give I, you money i've never had a, a 500 shopping spree before i know well you remember you remember ryan ryan was like i went and got the good stuff yep <laughs> he sure did and i don't blame him that's what i'm talking about uh oh did, did, her, did her bag just ring did she just ring off the alarm <laughs> check that bag check that bag look at what look at that piece oh look at this that looks nice, Kathleen. I know. I really like that. Did she put some metal leaf in there or something? What was that? I don't know what she put in there, but it's looking hot. Mm -hmm. That's a big piece, too. It is. 
All right. Yeah, so. Pick the bore off. I want to see what Kathleen is doing. Yeah, that is really, really nice. There's the piece she painted with oil the other day, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I really like Oh, that turned out beautiful. Very nice. I really yeah. like that. Uh, you know, Kathleen, from now on, you cannot say, I no, I can't, I don't I paint. I don't paint. I don't paint. That's past tense. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kathleen, can you hold that piece up? I don't want you to mess up the piece, but I want to see that painting again. Mm-hmm. That is yeah, awesome. I really like that. Very awesome. I, I, I like that. I like this because she did the stamps at the bottom. She did the stamp. She did a couple no. of stamps. That's really nice. That's oh, uh, that's some other league stuff right there. That is the byproduct of of, of uh, experimentation. That's an awesome piece. You did a wonderful job on that, Kat, uh, Kathleen. <laughs> she trying. Yeah, we we still can't hear you, but the the piece is awesome. She's trying. But your picture is wonderful. Yeah, your picture is great today. I mean, you can see everything so clear today. Maybe it's the sacrifice of sound. <laughs> your sound is so poetic today. <laughs> what just what just happened? What is she doing? Oh, she must be. She's rolling it out. Okay, she must be uh, making. Is she making a cane? I don't know if it's a cane. No. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Kathleen would be sign language. <laughs> no, that's oh, not what... making sheets. Okay. Okay. Making sheets. Very good. See? Oh, for the okay to wrap okay. it up. Okay. All right. Very good. Nice. Okay. See, see, we got it. No, you got it. It's Look the inlays. Okay, she's okay. making inlays. Okay. Very good. There we go. All right. It's like charades. She says she's making the inner the <laughs> inner part. You're doing you're doing really good, Kathleen. <laughs> this is our first uh um uh, 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 what's what's that? Lip sync this way. <laughs> That's right. It's our first, our first lip sync charade post. I like that. Frankie's on the scene. Oh, she's got a couple of them back there, Poncho. You see him? Yeah, she looks like she's working it out today. Look mm -hmm. at that long sheet she's got. Oh, look there. at that. That's real pretty. I like that color, Kathleen. Wow. I like that. Very nice. <laughs> It's like she lays them on top of each other and then is she going to roll that back? Oh, she just keeps rolling them. Oh, look at that. Um, I don't know why that's making me hungry. <laughs> it looks like, because it looks like a giant piece of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you see where our heads are today, y'all. <laughs> I know, because I meant to go down and get a salad earlier. I'm like, okay, I didn't eat lunch. <laughs> so I'm probably going to run down and salad myself. Let's see. So we're going to see well, what else can we show while we got uh, we got a, a, a good presentation by Sheba Maya coming up. Oh, I'm going okay. to show the six-minute video by uh, Lorraine McAlpine. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, see how it's straight really difficult. So we'll let this dry and then I'll go over it again. I don't know why it's not showing. I know. I was gonna say you. She really does need light. Light. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's try that again. It's like we definitely need to get her some lighting. Yeah, <laughs> but that was really not any lighting at all, was it? <laughs> it's like Lorraine works magic, boy. She be painting in the dark. No, that's not it. Mm -hmm. Lorraine, for real, for real. I think her video is malfunctioning. 
It's really nice watching Kathleen uh, do, you know, do this run through. Oh, look at Lorraine. I'm 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 so jealous of everybody that uses a little bit of paint. <laughs> She's dabbling in some acrylic right up in here. I, I don't know why uh, on this on this quarantine particularly I realize I'm basically a barbarian. You really are. But yeah, that's okay. Like, hey. Oh me, paint. Me got gobs. Gobs of paint. More paint. Give me more. <laughs> <laughs> What squeeze out more? Squeeze yeah. out more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait. Here you go. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> got to get the squeeze bottle. I got one person out there that's uh, like me. I, I understand, Miss Buster. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I'm definitely one of those people. Oh, I have I have students in my paint classes like that. I just but I have not met anybody as efficient as Michelle Vigent. Michelle, I don't know. Michelle's very efficient. Ooh, Lord, my paint in Michelle's hands. Whoa! Yeah, Michelle would have paint for the rest of her life. Exactly. <laughs> For the rest of her life. Look at Frank. Frankie just smiling at the screen. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna listen to her do her presentation and then uh, oh because she's talking, yes. Go yeah. ahead. And I use this brush for everything, for oil, for acrylic. And, you know, as you can see, it's streaky, so I'm going to do two coats of it. And she's painting with a and white shirt on. Like how did, how do they do that? The lines, it's just like, Her and Sheldon. Oh, Sheldon had a white suit on the other That's day. what I was going to say. You know, I, I, you know, she's got a white shirt on, but I tell you, the brother Sheldon be... <laughs> Everything I paint has got to be black. <laughs> it's going to be some paint going somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, and her brushes are super big. <laughs> it's a little smaller today, but she does paint with uh, yeah. brush out of you know brushes that would seem out of proportion for us. Yeah, for real. But that's the fun part of watching these quarantines. You just don't know. And it's like, hey, maybe I do need to buy some bigger brushes. <laughs> <laughs> or you smaller think, brushes. <laughs> you would think with all that paint I'm yes. using, then I would have I a bigger brush. Much <laughs> turquoise because I mixed it with white. So here, I'll probably just have to do my coat. I wanted to go over this. He's got some nice light today. I don't think she's in the same room she usually is in either. It's a bunch of easels back there. Look how big that sheet is she's doing today. Wow. We thought about doing things. That's pretty amazing, Kathleen. Luxury or wealth. 
but I decided that I would just focus. I know. That's why I said it's, it's, it's actually really fun watching her roll that out. Flat edge brush is really nice to use. It's easy to get into corners. It's fast. It's not a slow painting brush. And it gets the job done. Wow. See, um, what she's, oh, I see what she's doing. Yeah, she's making the, the heart boxes inside. So it became a love color. It's not. And that is it. <laughs> cliffhanger. She left us in it with a cliffhanger. Let's see what I want to let's see what Kathleen's got over there. Oh, okay. Dude, this is this is hilarious. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen sign language enough. <laughs> She's getting the job done though. She's gonna make, make it longer. Okay, she's gonna make it long. I'm telling you, I I boom, I got this charades. Keep going, Kathleen. Ten points you for got it going on. And your picture is still looking good. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And while, uh, you know, we've been doing a window on window uh, thing. So I'm going to show you one of Kathleen's first videos submitted. She oh, is nice. about to jump in and join the rest of us on her submission. So I'm going to give you a little rundown. Oh, Kathleen's twin. So the process for the uh, like the purple rains uh -huh. requires uh, making a sheet. I have shapes I use um, to make those collars or some other kind of bead. Um, so I make a sheet of clay you see the red sheet underneath anyway i'm using the experimentation and used uh clay that's not typically a uh, choice for me um told by other polymer clay artists that particular brand is not so sturdy or strong for our purposes so anyway um when I cut the shape and then folded this to uh, make the large bead, that happened. So that's not going to work. Here's the other one. I thought I could form it around uh, form it around my paintbrush here to keep it from cracking, but. It didn't work. So I'm going to do another another technique. I'm going to reuse this clay. I'm going to roll it out, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just use it like that. Hmm. I might just use it like that. 
and um, and get another pattern going. So let me collect my clay and I'll be right back. And she even did a time lapse for us. So give give Miss Kathleen a couple of days on this video thing. And I think we're going to see even more of her work uh, represented in the next couple couple of days. And there we go. I guess it would help if my uh, mic. I, no, I, I thought yours was fading down too. I was <laughs> like, look. <laughs> It's like, what? <laughs> now, she's making it even longer. Frankie's working on that. Uh, that piece is coming along well, Frankie. Is this the day that Karen's supposed to be unveiling stuff? Or was that? Yes, and I am so excited. Yeah, I've maybe. Already, we, I've we, already talked to us. So I'm not giving nothing. probably watching the show all, offline. So, uh, Karen, Matt. Karen, I call her McAdoo. I'm getting used okay. to calling her Miss Clark. Miss Clark, please, if you are watching, we are looking for your unveiling of That's right. Today. Karen is doing some unveiling today. I'm pretty excited to mm -hmm. see what to what's coming about. And you know, she'll be up there. Meanwhile, while she's getting ready to log in, I got another one for you to see. You know, I got all they sent me all kinds of stuff today. I you know I get all of the I get all of the uh what you call it? Short stuff, uh, long stuff. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Hey Frankie. Frankie's looking. <laughs> Frankie's trying to see too. Oh, what? Deborah Shedrick did her first time lapse by the end of the week. Look at that. I tell you, look at Deborah. Yeah, okay? I don't. It's not long now because they don't understand that uh, time lapse is long. It just feels long. That's it. Okay, look at her. Okay, hey, I am loving this. I am loving this because most of these people did not think this was something they could do. That's right. For those of you that are out here that are not following us, all of the artists, um, I would say at least uh, two thirds of them were remotely um, technically challenged. And I even have my areas where I'm technically challenged. Uh, so um, trying to figure out what equipment works, everybody has a certain amount of devices. Mm -hmm. um, bandwidth for their internet is another issue. It's just so oh, many the factors. internet is a huge issue, but yeah, people don't always realize that. Yes, it's so many factors that go into trying to make this easy for you to see it. Look, look how clear uh, Kathleen's picture just got. I know. I'm amazed that because her picture gets clearer and clearer. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the artists are all taking it upon themselves to learn uh, more and more about how to broadcast so that things can be seen a little clearer. <laughs> what she say? <laughs> the volume is down. It's not working. That's all right. Maybe we trade volume for visuals. Yeah, well, at least the picture is crystal clear today. Uh, we can see everything you're doing. <laughs> the visuals are good. And we shared your uh, your time lapse. Yeah, yeah. She saw. See, you're, you're good with the whole... <laughs> <laughs> We're making it work, making it work. So I don't know what happened to Karen, but we got a uh, Karen, she says she's going to be here. You know, Karen's one of those well, grand she, entrances. She's going to be, we could move her around a little bit. Right. Karen's um, going to make her grand entrance. Deborah Shedrick had a death in the family, so she might be missing for a couple of days. Oh, okay. Um, okay. She's got to go to a memorial, a, a service, I think, out of town. So okay. he's originally from Opelika. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we got a nice presentation from Ryan today, a seven minute presentation. So I think I might go ahead and what well, the next, you know, Sheba Maya. Mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm, I think we're just going to go with Sheba. Sheba's got a nice presentation ready for us today. Oh, so, OK, OK. I was just one yesterday. She's, she's coming from a whole different paradigm. And it's really nice to see. Mm -hmm. Because it's different. OK, 
Oh, wait, wait. Was she saying something? Are All you right. coming, Kathleen? Okay. Take care, it Kathleen. Great watching you. You did a fantastic job. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, tomorrow. <laughs> Take care now. Yes, y'all. We are dealing with technology the best way we can, but we're still going to bring it, it to work. you. Making it gonna, work. We're going to bring it to you anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Greetings, friends. Okay, so it's day 11, and um, I've been up and at them since about maybe 5 this morning, uh, trying to organize my thoughts, um, because I, I, what's on the front of my mind right now um, is a pretty ambitious um, project I'm, I'm finding out, and I have this idea of uh, I have this idea to create what I'm calling book boxes um, to contain and protect and display um, my collage work and books and possibly some other artwork, I don't know, um, because now I'm thinking, ooh, dioramas and all kinds of interesting things with um, hidden compartments and um, Lots of, I want things that will surprise, surprise you when you approach it. But the function of it all is also that um, it'll protect the artwork that it contains and complete the artwork that it, it contains. Um, so um, I thought I'd also kind of share with you some of the books that I've made. I found some uh, footage because uh, I couldn't find the books. I really want, I've been dying to share these books with you. Um, but I do have some footage from um, when I first created the books in 2019, um, sharing some of my um, thoughts on making the books and, you know, some things I tried and wanted to try in the future, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, my thoughts on books, um, why books? Because they're super cool. They can, <laughs> I mean, I think that paper and books and um, and now boxes are often thought of as these kind of like really mundane kind of objects. They kind of take for granted. We have access to them. lots of them. They can be run off at any moment. You can print them on demand. You can buy them from Amazon and have them delivered to you. Um, but what is a book really, you know? And what is paper really, what, you know, what's the value of it? You know, is it, what is the value of it? And um, it really, you know, I, I started by thinking, you know, all, all this time I've been using paper as a substrate. I've been using it to draw on, paint on, print on, these kinds of things. Um, I, was, I wasn't using it as an art making material. And I was trying to understand why I was struck by this. Why am I inspired by all these different kinds of paper? Well, there's got to be a reason why all these different kinds of paper were being made. So maybe to express something that, you know, it was important to express this specific way. And then what happens once that paper has been used for its intention? And then through collage, I was able to change the context of these things and its intention and watch an emotional response to paper. Um, even the idea that um, when paper is blank, um, when paper is blank, uh, it has a certain value, maybe sentimental or monetary, whatever. Um, but then when my artwork is added to it, that's different. If it's a print from a digital image. How many pieces of paper are you going to find in this world that has my artwork on it and my signature? So now the value becomes something different. It's not just a plain piece of paper now. It's um, something that is showcasing my artwork that you might want to display for your home that gives you pleasure or joy or adds beauty or amplifies your space in some way. And that's because you had an emotional response to the artwork. What's that all about? You know, it's triggered something. 
And now it's changed your perception of what it is. It's changed the context of what it is. And, um, you know, the idea of experimenting and adding things to paper, I mean, it just, the idea just expanded on and on and on about what makes paper so special. Um, and then the information that might go on that paper, whether it's art, whether it's, um, you know, scientific information, poetry, something, something's being recorded. Why? Why is that important? That this, something be documented this way. And then who gets to understand it, read it, consume it? Um, will they be able to understand it? You know, is it written in English? Is it written in symbols? Is it all pictures? Hmm. This segue into thoughts about books and um, um, this kind of like the idea of what defines and qualifies a book um, and what makes it sacred, you know, if it's religious text, if it's, you know, academic text, if it's a collection of important artwork that must be documented, a legacy that must be shared, um, artwork, because he was filling it, a storybook, because your child needs to hear that story a thousand times to the point where they memorize it, know all the pictures, and have held on to that book so they could read it to their own child. Like, you know, this is important. I started wanting to make my own books for many different reasons. That part of it is I have I have just control issues. <laughs> if it, if I want a book, I want to make a journal. I want to. I want the cover to be specific. The paper to be specific. What if it was all me? This is all born me, the absolute scratch as possible. That's an exciting idea. It takes a lot of work, um, and it also takes a lot of planning. Uh, I'm finding it takes a lot of materials and uh, a little bit of money too. <laughs> but uh, it's worth it. It's worth it for the pleasure and excitement of seeing an idea to fruition. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm going to share with you some books, some ideas on how to contain and display those books, and um, you know how I plan to get started on this, all this, this whole thing. And anyway, here we go. Okay, so I really wanted to share a little bit about the bookmaking process with you. Um, there's a lot that goes into even just like the most basic handmade book. And that's where I started. I started with the basics. Um, I had ideas about what I wanted to do. I searched all around for inspiration, but I really started at the beginning so I could get an idea of, you know, the basic ideas of construction so I could twist and push those ideas further. So this book um, was made uh, with handmade papers, um, or the cover was at least. Um, and the paper making process, um, I, I used recycled papers, um, or I used purchased and found papers that I recycled and turned <laughs> into um, into new paper that had to be pressed and dried and additives were um, also um, added to it. I think gold confetti was added to this one. Um, I, um, this was a Japanese um, style of binding, it's called stab binding, and uh, where the spine is decorative, the pages are exposed on the edge of the spine. Um, yeah, I, I really got into this one. I really got into this one. And um, I think the interior pages, I think I used resume paper that I cut down to this, um, to, to the size. And um, the cover is made from um, a board that's covered with the handmade papers. And then that board is um, scored and, and glued and constructed together in such a way that it creates a hinge. And then the papers are sandwiched between um, the covers and then sewn together by hand in this decorative uh, stitch. So that's what went into this book. It took me uh, 
probably about a week to get through the whole process. Um, the paper needs time to dry. The glue needs time to dry. Everything needs to be done just so, so that it's smooth, flat, perfect. Um, there's a lot of measuring, a lot of precision, many, 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 many steps and lots of techniques go into it. So, um, and I love that stuff. I love the minutia of um, lots of technique. So, um, because when there's lots of rules, there's lots of opportunity to stretch. So, um, so yeah, um, the following videos um, kind of share some more of my handmade books, some of the process of my handmade books and um, important to protect because so much work goes into them from the thought to the labor um, you know the results are certainly worth protecting so there needs to be some some sort of container um, something that acts as a display and a protective device um, for for my books and my collages because they're, they're both really vulnerable and delicate and tons of time goes into it and material and money so yeah that's and that's where these, these boxes come into play so enjoy the following videos and um we'll talk book boxes next okay so these are my first attempts at marbling on cardstock and i love it how gorgeous is that so i'm going to let this dry underneath some weight so that it dries flat and i'm very just excited about these results these are my first two attempts and i can use these as um papers to wrap book covers in so this imagine this is a book cover or um maybe even end sheets the pages that come between the rest of the book in the cover at the very front that's secured to the cover. Yeah, beautiful. And these are the same combinations of colors as well. Um, gold, purple, and white. Um, this paper is um, pink. And this paper was kind of blue, like bluish purple. So, and this is the result. And I'm just so excited about the applications here. So I'm going to keep practicing with this. I just really was excited and I wanted to show you. Okay. Greetings. So these are two hardcover um, book covers that I made yesterday. Um, I had to let them sit and underweight um, in order to cure, dry, and um, be nice and smooth and flat. So um, and this was the first cover I did yesterday. And um, it's um, a board that's wrapped in handmade paper. And moving it a little so that I hope that you can see the gold flecks that are embedded in the paper. Um, there's a spine in the front. It is a side bound book, so when it opens, um, the pages will be sandwiched between the front and back cover, and the book opens like so. And um, so today I intend on binding the pages. Um, adding the pages to the inside and um, completing the book today. And so this was the second cover that I made. Um, I marbled this paper. Um, it's cardstock that's been marbled with gold, blue, and white. And um, and here is the inside of that book. So it opens the same way. I also added this um, bow. <laughs> excuse me, faux leather strip to the front and also to the back. So, so that goes this way. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, and uh, yeah, and here's the inside of that cover. So I used a um, matching coordinating paper, um, solid color paper for the inside. 
So same thing, um, I'm going to put the pages in here um, today, and um, I'll be back with the final version. And hopefully it won't be a hot mess. I'm hoping that it'll be at least a beautiful mess, if nothing else. But maybe it'll be gorgeous. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, be back later. Peace. Greetings. So this is the finished product. I have a little bit of gold thread that I entwined with the wax thread um, for the binding. I will actually use resume paper for the interior pages. So I'm going to use this to present some drawings that I did last year. Um, just a quick look at the back. Not perfect. I'm not entirely <laughs> excited about the back, but uh, I did my best and I learned a lot. So here it is. Greetings, friends. So I'm here to share um, my latest hardcover book. Um, I created this a couple of days ago. I had to let it set and dry um, under weight for a couple of days. Um, and uh, here it is. I'm so pleased with the results so far. Um, this is still a work in progress. Um, I plan on adding more to it, but I do wanna share what I was able to complete um, thus far. So um, that is the front and this is the back. Um, I love the paper that I used to wrap this book in. It is one of the favorites that I've made so far. I made this paper earlier this week um, and it also took some time to dry. Um, and so I'll show you the interior of the book and when you open it up you see that the um, end pages are secured and glued down to the cover. Um, and then we have the interior pages, which is matching the paper on the outside. And then another paper that kind of went with this series of um, techniques. Um, you'll also notice that I have these cutouts in the paper. Um, and I did that so that the um, pages would sort of interact with one another, you know, you see that a little bit of the page behind it is peeking through. And so I thought, you know, that was a nice way for it to kind of unify these two designs. And there you have it. End of the book. Oh, and here's Misha with her interpretation and reveal. Did you like it, Misha? Get back. Yeah. Too close. There we go. Okay, Misha approves. So that's my book. Um, and I'm looking forward to <laughs> sharing more with you. And uh, yeah, Misha loves it. Don't you, Google? Okay, bye, guys. So as I was learning the basics of bookmaking, I was getting a ton of ideas on how to just stretch it to the furthest limits or maybe not even the furthest limits, but the furthest limits of my imagination, at least. And um, I was digging for inspiration um, of all kinds. Um, and I was seeing some extremely interesting books being made of all kinds of um, unconventional materials and that were seriously um, decorated and um, had lots of ornaments. And I started becoming interested in things like locks um, hidden compartments, um, things like that. And, um, yeah, I, I was thinking about things like boxes also that looked like books. Um, I remember, um, you know, the, the Bible, you know, in old movies or old television shows, that Bible that was kind of cut out and then had like a flask of liquor in it. You know, I thought that that kind of thing I thought was really cool. And um, just the idea that, um, you know, a book didn't have to be so straightforward, maybe it could be full of all this other kind of discovery. So, um, you know, as I'm finding these other kinds of books and um, other boxes for um, books, like slip covers and things, um, I started um, putting all of these ideas together and thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great if I had a way to display these, my collages in these kind of boxes that look like books. Like when you open them, they should look, it should look like a framed piece 
you know, in a, in a uh, shadow box. And maybe there could even be a collage behind it. You know, that could complete this piece. That would make, you know, assure me that the um, artwork was protected um, and not vulnerable to the elements or, or damage. And, um, and that there was so, that there could be more to it. There could be more to it. So, um, yeah, um, I grabbed a book on, um, I grabbed a book on making, uh, on constructing boxes. Um, and it seemed that this, this uh, book was specifically um, about making boxes that are accompanied books. And, um, and so I got this idea that, oh, what if it had a secret compartment underneath? And I saw, I just happened to find this um, project inside the book that was so close to what I was trying to do myself. I'm sure this is like nothing new under the sun, but um, since I was hoping that I would find something close to what I wanted to make. Um, but this book only covers the basics, like three basic uh, box making techniques but in such a way that you can, you know, customize it any way you want later. If you wanted to um, create other types of boxes, you could. So, and that's what I found with the books too. Once I learned the basics, I could, you know, make up my own rules, I could stretch, extend, or break the rules as I saw fit to express myself. And I was coming up with interesting variations on the instructions that I was given. So I'm thinking that um, I could create a box that's very similar to this so that when you open um, what looks like a book, it's actually a box. Um, there's a tray underneath that can slide open. Um, that tray could also be a book. It could, that slot could serve as a slip cover. Um, or it could also be a... Um, um, a tray that holds a tiny, tiny book. Because I'm also interested in very small objects. I think that making things very tiny, um, there's something about the power of fragility. I don't know. There's something about that, that, you know, somebody, um, and most people respond to tiny things with, with care. And, um, and also they want to lean in and discover what it's all about. Uh, so I like working small. Um, it also preserves a lot of my materials and your construction materials really far when you work smaller. Um, and theoretically, you can work a little quicker too. Uh, that's not always the case though. Um, but yeah, this is my idea, um, these book boxes. And, um, and right now what I'm doing is I'm collecting the materials and thinking about all the things I can make and do for this. Um, for this project um, while I'm waiting for materials to be shipped to me. So I went through all my materials, saw what I had that was uh, in my bookmaking arsenal. Um, a lot of the materials are similar, ordered on um, what I needed. And in the meantime, I'm going to be making um, some collage work to go inside and, and collecting old collage work to see uh, what I'd like to go in here. So, uh, yeah, that's my idea. And as it develops, I'm, I'm sure I'll be sketching some of these ideas out, writing some things down. Um, I got this idea, actually. Uh, I, I was inspired by um, insects. I was doing research for something entirely different. Um, and I came across um, insect collections and butterfly specimens that were framed and pinned under these boxes. And I thought, oh, it's so cool. If my uh, if my artwork was displayed this way, and then it just kind of evolved into this idea that it could be somewhat of a diorama in a box uh, that looked like a book that could either be displayed flat or on the wall. So um, yeah, that's my idea. I can't wait to share more. Ah, thanks for letting me um, go on and on about my books <laughs> and my love of books, paper, and boxes. Till next time.
Hi, my name is Artlesia Bibbs, and I'm from Fort Washington, Maryland. I had the pleasure of participating in the Creative Quarantine 2019 at the V. Larry Bunch of Brown Studios in Baltimore, Maryland. It was an amazing professional opportunity for me as an emerging artist. I was in a quarantine for a weekend um, among 10 other artists from the metropolitan area. It was a fantastic opportunity to network, to learn technical capability from other artists, and for artists to share different techniques um, that they were using, and to visit other artist studios within the same building. It was great. Um, for someone like me that's emerging and just getting into the art business professionally, some of the relationships that I made, some of the people that I met really helped to move my career along in an expeditious way. I got my first run of prints um, from my experience working with Puncho uh, during the quarantine. I think that the artist quarantine is an amazing experience. Certainly this year has been fantastic. I've had an opportunity to tune in and see some of the artists that I have been collecting, actually. LaShawn Bell's one. Um, Karen Clark is another person that I love her work. Um, there's just been an amazing um, group of people and an enormous amount of talent where you're actually able to see people create artwork online. And I've had the opportunity to create alongside with some of them, which has been fun. So I would encourage people to tune in online to uh, participate in the quarantine. And uh, hopefully you'll get an opportunity to participate yourself one day. I think it's a fantastic thing just to learn. Well, there you go, y'all. We got a couple of nice presentations with uh, Sheba Maya. She is taking this thing to another whole level. You see your man, Frankie Barrero, is still in the house. He's doing his thing. Hey, Frankie, talk to us a little bit, man. How you been feeling? I've been, I've been good working on this. Um, I see your painting is coming along. You're going to work the capital in the top of that. That is amazing. You can see it? Yes, I see it clearly. Okay, and then I incorporated the like a collage with the ceiling. Very, very nice. Up top. Um, and I'm seeing cross-eyed from staring at it. So uh, I would imagine you are, but you are definitely in the zone on this painting, man. The detail. I just, I got lost in it, and I said I wasn't kind of, but. Well, that's okay, man. When it comes, it comes. You got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And but it's I looking got... really good. I'm excited. I got a package coming from Poncho. Yes, sir. You got a package coming from me of some papers. I'm going to get you on something that's eight and a half by 12. You're going to stare at it real funny and not know what to do with it because you work so large. But you're going to have fun anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I like collage it into a large room. There you go, man. Whatever you can do with it is going to be fine. I think this is an exciting week because everybody's collaboration stuff is coming through. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a nice comment on your piece uh, by somebody out here. She says, loving Frankie's piece. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I'm actually I'm working on this, but I was working on another piece want to look at it. I'm going to put this one Hey, down. man, this is your time. You can, you can show oh, whatever you want. Hell, I'm going to put this one down. And I was working on this one here. You might need to angle your camera down a little bit. Oh, okay. There you go. Man, that's oh, nice. I love the colors on that. I love it's, that. It's Angela Davis. Yes. A homage to her. And um, what I did was I put her her afro as a mic. Nice. Here. And I'm going to darken this area to kind of make this pop out a little more. Okay. So, so you're reworking some pieces that have been... Um brought up to a certain stage mm -hmm. and so this are, are you are you re, you're going to be reworking that piece yeah very very nice 
This will be the, um, and make the, where is it? Uh, I can't lose this. This, you know, my colorblind issue, so. I, I still don't think that people can fathom what that means, that, that Frankie Barrero is colorblind as a result of, uh, were you uh, colorblind before your no, I was traumatic born, brain injury? I was born like that. Okay. My brother and me, we were both like that. And wow. My dad. And I'm an artist, go figure. <laughs> hey, that's a hell of a story right there, I tell you. So a hell of a testimony. These, two. these are my two P uh, that I've been using for this, and I can't lose it. I tried to do pastel on this to get, make it more, but it's too. No, yeah, acrylic pastel is not going to stick to that. It's going to come off. Yeah. Yeah. It just it comes right off. And then, yeah, I, pastel and, and acrylic don't really merge too well together. Remember, when you're doing pastel, you want to try to maintain a tooth to work on. If it doesn't have a tooth, it's not going to work. Mm. So you're probably better off just wiping that off mm. and, and then resuming what you were doing with your painting. The only other, you, you can use other materials, but pastel is probably the worst one. I know. Uh, you can use oil pastel, and that'll have a different effect. But you, if you're used to dry pastels, oil pastels will be a challenge. Yeah, I'm used, I'm used to the dry stuff, to the soft pastels for this. Well, that might mean you might have to do your stuff one oil pastel before the whole thing's over. <laughs> yeah. Experimentation, yeah. experimentation. But nothing like the finger painting, though, either. You know, um, I find that, too. I This was a live drawing I did in downtown. Okay. And um, I never did anything with it. I just drew it and started, put the first layer of paint on it. Well, more pastel, but... Now is when I'm adding more. You ever, you ever land on a spot where you don't even want to breathe? I understand. So how, what percentage of that is done with finger painting? Just the, uh, the end right here. Okay. Um, when you do it with finger paint, it it keeps the color. Mm -hmm. I find it's probably the paint I'm using too. It's a uh, liquid text. <clears throat> when I paint, yeah, it, it, you need a few layers of it. That is probably mostly the paint, Frankie. I did a little thing on acrylic paints the other day in the basics line tends to not be as opaque as the more expensive paints. So you might need to treat yourself to a really nice opaque yellow, golden, Liquitex, whatever your favorite brand is. And that way you won't have to use, um, it's very, very dense. But I think what you're working right now in layers is much better. Just take your time and do it like you're doing it. Has a nice look to it. And I don't. I don't want it to look perfection. I guess. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it's shaping up really nice, Frankie. And Miss Louise is in the house. She is. Uh, are you back to gilding that piece? You're muted. All right, there we go. I've moved to my laptop. Um, that way I can still work here and move things around Good. and also work on this. So 
moved to a different area in my studio and just decided to laptop it. Well, you look like you're doing your thing. Yeah, I thought I saw Karen pop in earlier. Yeah, she popped in twice. I think she came in the middle of uh, Shiva Maya's presentation, so she yeah. might be pulling back. She popped in and then popped out. Well, she will definitely have the floor again. Uh, Deborah Shedrick won't be on tonight. She's had a definite family, so we want to pay respect to her time. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody sent in some presentations, so that's been really nice, been nice stuff. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this next presentation on the screen. Nice. Keep things moving. Keep it moving. This is a piece that uh, Ryan Murray. Yeah, we haven't seen LaShawn today yet either, uh, have I'm we? I'm sure he'll be on later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to I'm trying to paint with this rabbit nipping at my legs. And it's... Uh I my sister used to have a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, stop. Okay, so today I'm gonna be making spray paint planets. Now, if you've ever been a tourist in a major city, um, either in the US or abroad, you've probably seen people uh, on the sidewalks uh, doing these kinds of paintings. Um, super quickly. Uh, I'm not going to be going that fast because uh, I don't want or need to do that. Um, but what you need to get started is um, I've already prepped my surface. Um, it's going to be this is going to be the, the background. Um, and you'll need a couple of round objects. Um, I've got uh, a record and a CD here and I've taped the middle, the middle hole so that the paint doesn't get through. Um, you're gonna need something that crinkles easily. I've got plastic bags here. And for my colors, I'm gonna do a simple red, orange, yellow gradient for one of my planets. And then for the second one, uh, I'm gonna do green, purple, and a touch of blue. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray very deliberately, very wet layers. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. And you're going to want to make sure that it covers, um, that the, the area that you spray um, will, it's going to be larger than whatever flat object you have. So, uh, let's see here. Again, I'm doing really, really close to the surface. Let's add a little bit of white in there. Probably need a little bit more coverage. Okay, that'll be good. So then I'm going to take one of our plastic bags, and just lay it down flat there, and then rub it around. And what this is going to do is it's going to give it a crackle effect. Like that. I'm going to let that dry for just a little bit. When it's done, it's going to look something like what you see here. This is uh, this is an earlier piece that I didn't finish.
Okay. I think we're, we're good to go on this, you know. You don't have to wait too long because you want everything to be reasonably wet when you're working. So we're going to lay down our record. Let's see, right here. take our black and just go around this again so you can give it its round shape well that's drying we're gonna go to work on our smaller planet Going to do our gradient. Let's so take our other plastic bag again, just lay it down there. And then we're going to have a little bit of fun with the background here. I'm going to add in some other colors to make it look like, like a nebula, sort of. So I'm going to go in with some purple. Very, very lightly. some white drops here. Not pressing down on the can all the way. Let's get those stars in there. Right, and then we just carefully Lift up our flat objects. There's one planet. And then there's a second one. Buster. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I did a quarantine, uh, I think it was 2006, with myself and five other artists um, with Poncho. Um, 
it was the very first quarantine that I have ever done. And I must say that um, I was forced to create. And I, I don't mean forced in terms of somebody making me, but myself making myself. I mean, it was cool. It was cool sitting in, in, in a room with um, five other artists, knowing that you had five other artists there, knowing that the juice of um, creative, creativity was kind of like flowing all over the place. You know, the, the vibe was good. The music was good. The conversation was good. It was great getting up and just walking around and seeing what other artists and how they were creating and it became like a spiritual journey because we we not only spoke on art, we just spoke on um, life. We spoke on the, the struggle uh, of, of an artist at times and how uh, like minds come together to, to make this thing work. So the quarantine, it is definitely a great thing. Um, I've been watching, I've been watching this one in 2000 now 21 uh, really really uh intensely i mean i like the idea of uh, how it's going now you know how it's going now to be able to uh see you guys virtually in each other's studios and seeing how you create it's just this it's a different kind of feeling a different kind of flow sorry Karen. oh man i might just remember what i said all right I'll take some of that and some of this. <laughs> you can try to pick up where you left off, and I'll just pick it, pick up okay. where you were. Go ahead, keep talking. Yeah, so you know that's a that's a different kind of flow watching you guys and uh, me sitting on the other side now, um, as so many other people are just kind of like tuned into uh, into the live feed and seeing you create um, artists that I know. You know, uh, Karen Clark. You know, I've known her for a minute. We went to Africa together on that to my first trip to Africa. But to sit there and watch her throw and 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 see it all come up in a, into fruition, just like right there, it's like, well, well, I knew you did it. But seeing is a different thing. The Sean, it was the same thing. I'm actually watching your work, learning about Mr. Mr. Mary, um, you know, and how you do what you do, um, the way that you do it. Um, was was good as well. So I say great job to all of you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of everybody's work. Um, I'm gonna gonna ride this process with you uh, for the next uh, next few weeks and um, keep staying creative.
we have LaShawn in the house. Hey, LaShawn. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? We are. How about you? Look at you. Got a fresh piece of canvas up. LaShawn is like every oh, yeah. day, baby. <laughs> got it. Got to keep it moving. Day. Well, I I'm received, trying to catch. I received my care package today. Okay, good deal. I just got one from you. Fantastic. Le look, at least the mail is running right now. Yes, yes. Louise, I don't know. you have I didn't one? get anything. I don't think it's running. Uh, it's you in the middle of the country. I, I, you got to go through real. mountains. mountains, it, mountains it got to go to Mexico. It's got to go through, uh, <laughs> through for real now. I'm you not might trying get to it get in it two at, years. You didn't, my, you didn't send mine out the same time. You sent ponchos. That's what that is. She's so needy. She can't help herself. I know. I know. But, you know your package is coming, darling. From no, you're supposed, to say, you're supposed to say, Louise, your rejection is showing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said it. I'm glad you said it. When when people are like that, you be like, "Excuse me, your rejection uh, is." I'm going to explain this to you only one time. When I send twelve packages from Baltimore, you're always going to be the last one to receive a package. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It might not be. It might not be you. It might just be the circumstance. <laughs> but you know, as a matter of fact, you got uh, you got one package coming from me again. Huh, wait a minute. I got to do the Frankie. That's right. <laughs> you got a package coming. <laughs> I got all of the first one, the first round out. Now I got to get, I'm trying to get something to, uh, I got Ryan out. I got to get something to Frankie. I got to get something to Sheldon. Um, so I'm still I'm, I'm making my rounds. I know. Yeah. I'm doing. I'm sending out packages tomorrow. Well, I sent everybody stuff out today that that was on my list. So that's Louise, because you are you are the man. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should be kind of done with the whole. That's that's all out now, right? Yeah. That's because yeah. you the yeah. man. You, so you, you know what you that means, y'all. That like. means look out because uh, lightning fingers, uh, Lashawn is going to be at it. <laughs> I know because every day you have something else on that easel. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I got to. I'm trying to catch up with Poncho. Sure. Oh no, no, no. You trying to catch up with Karen? Karen. That's what I was going to say. You trying to catch up with uh, Karen? Uh, no, 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 no. I can't catch up with Karen. I ain't even trying that. You gotta stay in your lane. You got, you, say you gotta go to the, the next person in the next lane, huh? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we've already we've no all bowed to Karen. That's right. We've taken our leave. She's got yeah. her together. Yeah. She's together. Uh she came in a couple of times, but her time must yeah, be yeah. Here today. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to give you a refresher of what her works look like. Got to get one of those angels. I think you might have to move fast. I know because yeah. I'm sure those aren't gonna last long. Oh no, I'm sure they're not. I'll be giving her a call this evening. I really like those too. So what else, Karen, is going on, how you feeling, man? What's what's happening in your world? 
Well, you know, guys, I am feeling good. Uh, just trying to line up my next uh, stage of paintings. I got uh, a whole slew of small ones I'm about to get busy with. I like um, your terminology. I like your terminology. Slew. Slew. Uh, <laughs> those of you out here that are keep taking notes, write down slew. The word slew. slew. Okay. <laughs> Cause he's done a means whole many. Minute, like most of <laughs> like we were like, oh, I'm working on, I'm looking to see what my next painting is gonna be. But Lashawn is, uh, he's working on a whole slew of them. Yeah, he's on slew yes. mode. Yes, yes, yes. I got, I got to do some damage here, so I'll be working on some acrylic stuff for probably the rest of this week, and then I'm gonna move on over to my oil pastels. And I can't wait. I love working with oil pastels. Very cool. I haven't been and, in oil uh, pastels in a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think well, uh, I can't wait to see gonna... what you do with those. Oh, I'm gonna have some fun with them. I'm gonna have some fun. So uh, yeah, so that is prepping time. I'll be prepping a lot of uh, canvases, adding some t different textures to them, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and some chargers and uh, get ready to get some designs on them and get some things cranked out. That's what's going on, folks. Can you see that top? Yes, I can. She has been, she's on the gilding section now. Oh, uh, yeah. Very, it's looking very good. Nice. It's getting there. Good. I figured if I transfer to my laptop, I could still do some some stuff. There you go. And still manage. Still manage the phone. So how long do you think that's going to take, Louise? You got a lot of little areas to cover. <laughs> well, I got this much done. <laughs> now you actually making good progress. I'm making a lot more, a lot better progress than I thought I would be. And I think it's that's because crazy. I laid it down. Um, when it was standing up, it, it was taking a little longer. But then I was like, let me lay this thing down because this is I, I need to really crank out, crank this out. And so, and then I put these on and I'm able to like pick up just a little bit at a time with these on, you know, I can pull like little pieces off of the gold because this is the 23 karat gold and it's, it, you know, it'll fly away on you. It does not care. It tries to get away all the time and using my brushes, I have central heat. And so any bit of wind, any bit of wind is like my heating vents are all the way up there, but it can, it can feel the slightest wind and it just gets going. So if I do it on here, it's blowing it off. And even though it's so far away, it's still it, any bit of uh, wind will blow it away. So it's a little easier just using these gloves and just peeling tiny bits and pieces off at a time. And if you remember when I was doing the other one, I was just laying big chunks on, but when you're working with something you have to pay for, for real, for real, you tend to, you see that you tend to take tiny pieces. <laughs> well, I'm sure there is a method to your madness. That is going to be an awesome piece when you're done. It's nice to see you uh, using all of that that crack material you got at your place. <laughs> your, your, your gold leaf collection is off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> all you gold miners out there in Colorado, hit Louise Cutler. <laughs> <laughs> we knocking at my door. Say she got it all. She's over here. No, I do. I like having different. I love having different patterns. Oh, we are. We are very clear from your presentation that you like to be <laughs> ready for anything that happens. Anything, anything. That's just it. Somebody needs to get Karen on the phone. I've been waiting for the unveiling. Yeah, Karen must be in up to her elbows in artwork. 
She has to be, because she would have been back here by now. She's in there. Uh-huh. Because she's normally on and, 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 and raring to go right about now. And she told me, she was like, I'll be there at nine or whatever time it is for you, uh, you strange people. Well, I don't know. I guess Frankie must have took a little break, too. <laughs> you must be sleep on a sofa or something. Well, <laughs> you got to grab them winks whenever you can get them. I know. I, tell I you, know. That's true. I tell you, it's like I sit up here sometimes, and I guess I don't really have to tell you guys because you watched my video, but it was that whole either lay down or fall down the other night. I understand. I, I, a couple weeks, we've got quite a few nice videos of you uh, trying to stay up on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Sleepwalking, you mean? She was sleepwalking. Pretty much. She was doing a lot of yawning and a lot of uh, eyes was all puffy. Oh, no, I had one. And uh, it's on Instagram because I was up and I was painting. I was like, let me do my Instagram post. And I'm like, and every time I'm like, okay, I'm rambling now. I'm just rambling. <laughs> I kept falling asleep in between, you know, my my conversation with the Instagrammers. That's where I am right now. I'm nodding out. You're nodding out, Frankie. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of I'm nodding out. Those really? make the best videos. Uh huh. Those make the best videos. <laughs> I forgot about that time lapse thing. Yeah, it's going to be nice once you start using that. Mm -hmm. So I'm recording the whole thing and then time lapsing. Well, do, do, do yourself a favor. Set it up on a tripod and let it run for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. I uh, The time lapses you see me showing on the show... I've shot them all day. You're talking about eight hours, six hours of time lapse. Good yeah, thing. you just have to set it up and forget about it. Yep. And then hit time lapse after. Yep. No, hit time lapse and just let it run. Yeah, and then don't even think about it. Just keep doing your thing. Before I start, hit time yeah. lapse. Anytime you want. It's, it takes a one photograph every 60 seconds. Because I don't want to record for an hour and then forget to hit time lapse. The best time to time lapse is like when you're not on the air and you're working mm -hmm. in your studio space. Just let it run. Yeah, that's when I usually do it. I try to collect this dust, but it doesn't happen. Oh, that's going to be so Where pretty. You, you know what, Louise? I used to take it and put it in a little container. I know, but this little dust is just this dust is just powder. I mean, it's like a powder. Uh, LaShawn, you don't understand. The, the child just did a demonstration of her collection and the flakes <laughs> and all the stuff she's got. She's got the goods. <laughs> <laughs> I think gilding is her specialty area. I love gilding. And I love using gold. The real gold. Hey Ryan, how you doing tonight? I'm good. What do you what do you what you got going on over there? Let's see. Uh, just, just cricketing all night, probably one of those nights. That's making my layers. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Yes, nice. we can watch you cricket then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was on LaShawn. <laughs> no, LaShawn just dropped out, so it replaced him. All right. I don't know if you can see all of this gold dust. I would be covered in gold dust. Oh, I just love this. 
Now I'm glad I did the metal leaf before I did the painting. You see the metal leaf all over her face? Yeah, it's sticky, but that might be nice. I know. I like that too. I like I like what's happening. So I think I might go back in and do her hair. Go ahead and do her hair and then redo the gold. You know, just brush it because this will be flaky until I seal it anyway. So I'm loving this. I am so loving this. I have to put down some more uh, styes. Doop, doop, doop. Are you going to work on? Oh, there's Michelle. Hi there. Hey, Michelle's popping the in. <laughs> you guys hear my piano playing in the background? Oh, yes, we do. I like it. <laughs> my, husband, my husband has to play when he comes home from work. That's his cool down. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We, we need something different to listen to tonight. Well, that's that grand piano down there. That's why it has such great sound. That big old piano. Oh, we got people popping in. Mm -hmm. Who just came in? Okay, we got LaShawn. Oh, nice. All right. You going to play some music for us today, Plancho? Yeah, I sure can. It's about that hour. It's about that time. We got folks popping in and doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Time for some music, y'all. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get them jams going. <laughs> Can you angle your camera down a little bit? There we go. That's good. Thank you. 
Hey, Karen. Hey, let's get ready to open up the kiln in a second. All right, we want to put everything on hold because we've been waiting for that. <laughs> Putting on my gloves. You ready? We are all ready, baby. All right. Ooh, the Ooh. unveiling. Ooh. All right. Karen, I was about to call you. You had us wait. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. So um I'm gonna pull out them carefully. They're still at about two hundred degrees. I'm gonna cut off the um air um right now. Um because I'm I was kind of doing a cheat fast cool by cutting on the fans. Mm -hmm. And uh here, let me. I'm going into the far corner of the studio. Cut this fan off because um, you don't want the fans to go, and so that they can cool down really, really fast and crack. But uh, let's pull out one. Let's see what we got here. Wow! Ooh, wow. Nice. I love the rim on that. Thank you. Very it's nice. supposed to be, thank you. It's supposed to be a little bit redder, but uh, that's okay. You know, so that's the thing dealing with uh, glazing. You know, you get a seventy percent. So this was this rim right here was a test of a different color that I was playing with called brick red, um, and it came out a little pinkish purple. But I I think that if I add a couple more layers on it, it will turn the blood red that I want. Um, so um, I look forward to that. But that's that came out okay. So when I um, talk about first and seconds being perfect and something being non-perfect, this one is a perfect piece. Um, it's probably just going to ring if I pluck it. Nothing stuck to the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the mug um, that I've done. Looked inside. You know, it's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to do white for people who like to drink teas so that they can see. Mm -hmm. um, um, but sometimes I'll do them in honeys, but I like to do light bodies. And here's another one. So I try to do them in families. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Um, so here, let me show you what a second looks like. This is a second. Oh, okay. yeah. And so this is why you know 70%. So it still can, it's still fine. It still can be sold, but it can only be a second edition. And mm -hmm. some people like second editions because one, um, financially, it can be um, okay for them. And two, they like to have the imperfect of um, a piece. How much? Mm -hmm. How much so now it? will you file that down or mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay. so all of this gets filed down that one is sold uh, -uh. Okay. i was gonna I'll ask her that, that. I'll, 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 you're too slow baby you gotta stop being slow uh you know what, gonna, Karen? that's gonna be my quarantine uh memorabilia uh piece hey okay that that's only because you want to visit him anyway karen <laughs> so here are some of the other pieces that i was doing so mm. I, they still need to be, they have one more fire because gold will go on her earrings mm -hmm. and on the back side of her. Wow. Oh, nice. That, that, That's that, beautiful. That, that white is just intense. Mm -hmm. I love that, Karen. Yes. A bad thank combination you, you, you. right there. Very nice. Thank you. I, is um, that the I'm one that's coming to my house? I'm just checking. Oh, no, girl. <laughs> no. So, She's Karen. like, no. So, <laughs> you so know, you might, you might show all of these to the artists in the group. Karen, was the last so one sold? Is, which one? The man? No, the one you just showed before. The one, the one you oh, just showed. No, 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 it's not sold yet. Mm -mm. Um, no, no, no. Here. That one's mine. Which one? The first one? Yes. You got to see them first. Are you, are you sure? I mean, you haven't even seen the second or the third. Oh, one. yeah. Or, sure? the, or the price. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you've got a couple um, more. Right, so I wanted you to see how red it gets. You see that redness? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so oh, wow. that means that I didn't put it on heavy enough, but that, her mohawk. Woo, oh, man. Karen, I her love mohawk. Oh, man. man. That, is that is gorgeous. Karen. Karen. I'm going to touch that. Yes. Now you me. want that one? <laughs> That's nice. Thank That's you. Gorgeous. Karen's kicking butt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This one's the next one that has to be touched in gold. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you All see right. the redness uh. of that. 
Very, oh yeah. Nice. I like what you did taking that down through the belly and having mm -hmm. that little red in there. I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, that's Thank the you. beard guy. I loved him. I loved him. Very, Thank very you. nice. Thank you. So um, still a few more touch-ups, but I'm really enjoying those. Um, I can't wait. Okay, so you ready, Poncho, to see Poncho? Yes. I, I still got to touch Poncho up with a little white gold, but this is Poncho right now. Woo! Oh, nice. So oh, I, that's instead nice. Of doing, instead of doing white, I did uh, ocean to mm -hmm. it. So very, mm -hmm. very, very nice. Nice, Thank nice. Thank you. So still got to touch them up a little bit. So um with the third firing part of it and then um those are fun so sometimes i just sit here in the studio and just look at them like what could i have done differently <laughs> that's, part of it. that's part of the creative process. plus you got that factor of the unknown which i think mm -hmm. is a wonderful part of ceramic you yeah just, you just don't know what's going to happen when you swing that top off I know you just don't know, and I can't wait to put the gold on him because that's going to make him pop even more. That's oh what yeah, I, I love about that. So, um, Poncho, this piece I'm bringing up to you because I am really interested in that alcohol process. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited about doing him. Oh, he's got that red hair, like the mm. um, the hair you mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. You can really see it too, Karen. Hello, love. How are you? Look at her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, getting all yeah. emotional. Yeah. I, you know, you got to say goodbye to him. <laughs> so, another color. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty. This is an iron color. So, some people don't always like the very, um, you know, pastel colors. So, mm -hmm. I do a lot of... Um, I do some more earthy colors. This one, I don't know, is, that looks like a second to me. Yeah, honey, it ain't no second. <laughs> know that. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You better second it right out your mind. Look at Karen's like, no. No, man. No. Mm -mm. Oh, I love that turquoise around the rim. Thank you. I love that. That is beautiful, Karen. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. So it's tears and tears um, of the pieces. So I'm just going to go down to the next tier. And when I say, um, I'm going to, excuse my backside, y'all. I have to finagle on the inside of the kiln to pull the shelf off. And so these shelves are, uh, for two shelves, it's $150. So you like to keep them intact. Um, I have dropped a couple and had to replace them. That's for sure. Mm. Oh, that's I, it's so interesting how glossy they got. This is mm -hmm. not usually the glossy. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. That is beautiful. I just love Thank that you. cup. Thank you. I'm going to have to get me one of those cups. Mm. Mm -hmm. Come on, girl. Because I just love that color. I'm trying to see if there are any special ones. I mean, they're all special, but spe oh, that's special. I'd Look say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Oh, I love those. The little circular pattern on that. That's yeah. really pretty. I like what you did with that. I love that color. That yeah. is a beautiful color. Woohoo! That's bad. Oh, yeah, that's, that, that is tight. And so it's always nice to have those little surprises that you didn't expect. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I like that. Oh, here's an oh that came out good too. So now nice. Oh so now, yeah. I love you know, what that I love what that blue is doing. I love yeah. that. Karen, look, all our faces is like this on the screen. I don't know if you can see us. We all mm -hmm. like pressed up. We might as well be pressed, have our nose pressed up against the window. <laughs> I like that. And now, you know, so now playing with this new color, I know what I'm gonna do with it. So like right now, it's really yummy on this very masculine piece. But mm -hmm. it's going to be yummier when it goes on to a bright color so that you can see all of that red right there. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be really pretty. I'm thinking about the next thing that's going to happen. I'm like already seeing it. Like, so what you going to do with that piece, girl? So that's ex that's exciting. Very, very exciting. So this is why we, we kind of sit up here in the studio and look at things as it goes along. 
Okay, let me, I'm gonna start putting these on the shelves. Um, oh, another color, honey. Oh, that's a pretty color too. Yeah, honey is always- oh, that's Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the colors, um, I was doing some research at one point um, of what was very pleasing to the eye and mm -hmm. people gravitate to greens and blues. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, so it's really interesting to have these um, bright colors where people are like, give me that honey. And I'm like, okay. That's really pretty right there. Oh, this one kind of, I mean, it's still not, it's still cool, but mm -hmm. I like that. I'm, I'm gonna work more with that. This is the one that I remember I told you with the crack. Mm -hmm. It's a crack in the bottom of it. Oh, okay. That's a second. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I put my seconds on one shelf and I put the primary stuff, the stuff that came out really well on another shelf. And then um, I cleaned them up um, I really, really well. I want Who a wants second. Who wants a second? Poncho wants a second. I want, well, I want a second. I want, I, want the first second. Look, I want one of those dark ones to be a second. Mm -hmm. I, mean, we, I, I knew somebody was going to come out the blocks like that. I know that's right. You know, it's always one. Always it's always one. one. Right. All right. Shapes one. So dealing with um, when you were seeing these um, uh, these pieces before, you were like, oh, they're so big. Mm -hmm. clay, um, the clay shrinks by 14%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they so do. That's mm -hmm. So that's, they're actually the perfect size for about two cups, two to three, two and a half cups mm -hmm. of um, glaze. But these are really cool to look at, you know, with the new designs that I had been using. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. I'm, I'm liking it. I like the mm. different color palette you're using this time. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Same here. I was trying to change it up. And you did. Very mm -hmm. successful. Yeah. Just trying to change it up just to, um, um, you know, to come up with something new because you know people love mugs but um they don't feel like having the same thing over again like oh i already got one of those mm -hmm. i want them to i want to keep it spontaneous um for yeah. the client so i um, i do brooches for clients um and so that they can have a little something to um to enjoy but this year, the last year I did them in iridescent. This year I'm going to do them in 14 karat gold. That's why I was asking you so many questions right. about, you know, um, dealing with the um, gilding that you were mm -hmm. doing to see if I could actually maneuver that. So I'm going down to the next level. Oh, I got something good down here, y'all. You ain't you ain't disappointed yet. Ooh. <laughs> Nice. Oh wow, that's a that pretty, that's a pretty teapot. color. That's a pretty teapot. Mm -hmm. Now the the teapot lid is stuck, not really stuck, but what happens is the air of the heat is inside of that. Right. And so I have to just tap it, and it will go poof and pop right off. Wow. But well, don't do that. that on the, don't do that on the air. No. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. But that one came out really good. But what I'm curious, I'm just curious, and I'm going to have to talk to my business partner because it's very interesting how um, I did the same cone fire mm -hmm. and the faces became really shiny and glossy. That's not usually what typically happens. Oh, Poncho, look. I love that one. Mm -hmm. Purple, purple. That's uh, plum. That's awesome. Plum, plum, but it's plum, getting close, plum. baby. Getting close. It's getting close. Mm. And look at what it did on the white. You see that? Okay. How the white transitioned in? Unbelievable. That is so cool. I love that. Okay. Let's see else, what else we got up in here. Okay. Let me take this part off because I'm just going to leave the bottom ones in for later. Sheldon, Sheldon Smith says, do your supportive artists get dibs first orders on these? <laughs> uh, I don't know. This is a votive. Let me see that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really pretty. I love that image on there. 
see. Um, I'll probably touch that one up with gold too. So, uh, and let's see what else. These are just these are when I do groups, I do groups of everything, mm -hmm. um, with color. But you know, so nice. Those are so tiny. What these? No, they just feel tiny in your with the big gloves on. Yeah, they're not <laughs> tiny at all. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's going on with that. That teapot's actually a second. Let's see if this one is. What? Uh, it's a second? Mm-hmm. It's a second. So you see that? Oh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's the and so that is why when people um people look at pottery and they go, ooh, that's too high. It's too expensive. There is a lot that goes into it and you just, you're hoping. You know, yeah. You're just on a wing and a prayer when it comes to it. So, and when I have to look at this, of everything that I just finished pulling out, I say probably about 72 to 75% of it actually came out really well. Mm. Um, and, and the rest of them, so, and I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces out of, um, uh, how many pieces was that that I put in? About 42 pieces. Mm -hmm. Seven pieces came out imperfect. And so, oh, okay. but still, still perfect, you know. Still and, perfect. I mean, they, they, right. they're still sellable. Right. They're still sellable, but just differently. Yeah. Right. So um, what I do is I go live um, and I do a second sale um, for right. the pieces. Well, you might not have to do that this time. Right, yeah. okay. exactly. And, oh, so I Karen, you're already live having your second sale. Hey, Karen, so how many more unveilings of um, kill, kill openings do you think you'll have between now and the end of the quarantine? Um, probably three or four. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit. I mean, like, I still have um, jars and spheres, and I'm still creating. So um, it'll be, yeah, it'll be three or four. Yeah. You're yeah. making spheres? Yeah, when I um the jars with lids. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um I want to. Very nice. I can't wait to do the alcohol to that too. So, mm -hmm. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> uh huh. So it looks cool. like nya. Hey, nya. Looks like nya. Yeah, yeah. If uh, nya is my business partner, she's cool. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's cool as I'll get out. Um, the story with Nya is um, that um, back in like uh, 1999, I was watching PBS. I um, saw her on TV and she had this company called Rich, uh, Richmond Pottery. I called my mom and I said, yo, mom, do you want to take class? And she said, yeah, I will. So my mom did it for probably, I say two years, but I think it was about six years that my mom did pottery with me. And then mm -hmm. she said, I, I don't want to do this. I only did it because you wanted to do it. And I wanted to be a participant in the influence of your life. And I said, okay, cool. So um, I went on to do um, internships. So that means that I was cleaning up the muck and the mess that was mm -hmm. inside of the studio. And then um, Nya, um, I became, um, she gave me mentorship. And then um, she just got tired of um, owning the company. So she asked me if I wanted to buy it. And at that time, I was like, oh, no, that's huge. That's a lot of responsibility. I don't want it. I look mm -hmm. back at it, and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I should have done it. And now sometimes I'm like, no, nah, I shouldn't have done it. But <laughs> um, at the end, uh, she called me, and she says, hey, do you want to go into business together? And I was like, me? Yeah. And so from that point on, we have been friends for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, 20. Yeah, what, how many? Uh, 21. No, 22 this year. 22 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and she can cook some amazing Vietnamese food. Hey, oh, it's so good. Yes. Um, but um, it's so interesting to um, how um, dealing with the cultures, how much cultures align. Um, mm -hmm. Because having soul food. <laughs> And having Vietnamese food is just different spices, but really the same thing. So, like when she makes collard greens, she mm -hmm. does collards with like fish oil and onion and tomato and um, bits of um, I think it's fried tofu, but it is like so good, so so oh, good. Wow. She, yeah, the girl can cook. 
she can cook really, really well. I always look for it. So when she comes into the studio, she's always like, well, Karen, can you cook something? I'm like, no, you cook. <laughs> yep. So here's some of the last pieces. and Very, very nice. I, I love that plum white combination. Yeah, it was. It's cool. It's very, very cool. That's one of the new um, glazes that I was working with. It's called June Berry, or June Perry. June Perry. Pancho well, sound like he's eating something. Well, you know, he might be having a cashew right now. Hey. No, I'm doing morning cashews over here. That's Would you what like I some thought. Rice? Quinoa. <laughs> Quinoa. He's yeah. over there stuffing his face. This, this is stuffing his face fast. kind of sound. Mm hmm. So, Karen, those are beautiful. Thank you. So this is just the first bunch. The next bunch goes in um, very soon, probably like tomorrow, um, because they're over here waiting to be loaded, and then some are here to be loaded. Um, but um, I'll, I'll be doing a time lapse tomorrow so that you guys can see me run through it. But um, and then I got to get set up for Friday because I have to do the appliques dealing with some of the faces. Um, for the um, platter that I'm doing, um, mm -hmm. and so that Poncho can work around the faces that are going to be placed on it. So, just trying to, oh. um, I'm always thinking in advance of what the next thing is going to be. Yeah, you got it going on, girl. She Nancy. does. Nancy Boku. Oh, he's so cool. And mm. you know, sometimes when you look at pieces, you, do you guys ever look at your pieces and go, dang, that's me? Yep. <laughs> yeah, every now and then, but that's every phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, you have moments where it's like, wow, I remember like with my bronze pieces, sometimes I'll step back and be like, who did that? That is <laughs> <laughs> my mom goes, she looks at my some of my pieces and she goes, uh, she goes to my father, George, we made her. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> we made you, Karen. We made you. And I'm like, okay, Mama, thank you. <laughs> yeah, like, I appreciate you making me. Yeah, but, you know, we, that's uh, sweet. We thoroughly enjoy uh, this unveiling. We've been waiting for you to come in. We thank sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for waiting for me. I appreciate it, y'all. We like uh, we're Karen. We saw her pop in and pop out and pop yeah, in and pop out. I was, yeah, I popped in to let you guys know, 9.30, I was going to be here to be ready. Well, you, were on, you were on top of it. That is beautiful stuff. Make Thank sure you, you put my uh, my second to the side, and I'm going to put one of your other ones, too. Hey, that sounds try good. Try not to be greedy. I'm going to let you get at least get them out to the public first. Okay, that sounds good. I ain't get one of those darker. I want need. those darker color ones with the turquoise on it. Okay. That's me. Cool. Cool. I like that. Somebody wrote, "I need that purple one." I'm done. Mm -hmm. Done. Just send me, a, send me, inbox me, at uh, or DM me and um, and Facebook or send it through Instagram or send me an email, Pottery902 at Yahoo, and I got you. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, this is probably my favorite thing out of the kiln. It's always That's one really thing that I always pick out, and I think the reason I picked this out is because of what my intentions were and that was um dealing with sankofa the only thing i didn't do properly was turn his neck off to the side so that he or put a pearl in the back so that he could grab the stone to reach for it but um other than that i still like him a lot so i'll be sad to see him not really sad happy if he goes into a new place but very excited that um i had the opportunity to make him yeah beautiful so, thank you sir thank you thank you so on that note, I'm going to peace y'all out. Well, thank you, darling. That was a treat. We're looking forward to more of your unveilings. Or what do you call them? Kiln? Uh, what do you openings. Call them? Kiln, kiln openings. openings. All right, mm -hmm. Karen. We enjoyed the kiln opening. That was thank fantastic, you. dear. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too, y'all. Bye. Bye. That was pretty fabulous. Let's see. We got to see how Michelle is doing up there. How you doing, Michelle? Hopefully, oh, you have, hopefully you have. Hopefully you have a new picture. I'm uh, This is actually uh, uh, honestly today was great. Um, I got up a little bit later than I wanted, but then I was on like I was gessoing canvases. We, we, and then we, I can was, hear, we can hear it in your voice, Michelle. I know. <laughs> yeah. And kiddo came back from school much happier. So like everything's good now, and we're all good.
And did, did uh, my you, car. Oh, what's that? did you get a chance to see Karen's unveiling? I was watching. Yeah. Crazy stuff. What did you make a rubber stamp out of that? Uh, yeah, I made a rubber stamp out of uh, one of my paw prints. Um, I only got about one carving in me a day because um, of um, my carpal tunnels acting up just a little bit. But um, uh, I was really happy with it, and I can't wait to use it. Um, let's see, I I did I had my experiment sheet with it, but Karen, do you ever use the copper gloves, Michelle? I mean, Michelle, do you ever use the copper gloves? You know, I've tried different things. Um, um, honestly, I've gotten it mostly under control. I used to be really disabled by it. Uh, it's only flared up because I, I spent a late night, uh, a couple nights ago, trying to edit video. Mm, and okay. and, um, and honestly, that was it. Like, uh, I, I uh, lifting weights and I went to an occupational therapist. Huge difference. Oh, um, okay. I cannot recommend occupational therapy enough. Um, they helped me work out what I was doing wrong and um, and fixed it. But uh, the other thing that I was working on, uh, it went faster than I expected. I was actually going to ink this for my my presentation, but then I inked it while there was an availing, and I wasn't expecting it. Um, <laughs> so. It's really very, pretty. Very nice. You got a nice delicate touch with your stuff. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love seeing, like, like, I was worried that the texture would be too um, loud, but then um, I added the white gel pen and it works, it, it, it works so well, but mm -hmm. I meant it to be eight by 10. And that means I have to fill this space, <laughs> I think, but I don't know. I, don't know. I, I like think it looks stuff. really nice. Yeah, I want to cut it down because this, this piece I'm going to, um, like, like I said, I bought some resin, but I wanted to mix a few pieces at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. So I was gonna do that this weekend when um, there's no one in the, the studio building. It's it's a very, very low VOC resin, but um, but I still don't wanna like anyone to complain it's stinky. And um, what was it? I'm gonna spray this a couple times, make it waterproof. I'm gonna mount it onto an aluminum board. And then, uh, and then coat it with resin, which will change the finish. So I only want to do one watercolor paper at a time so that, well, or at least one watercolor paper for my first time, because what if I don't like the look? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I've mm -hmm. seen it on other people's work and I really, I, I enjoyed the finish. I thought that it, was, it looked pretty cool. Very, very nice. It's, ni it's wonderful watching your whole process and it's wonderful watching you experiment. <laughs> Yeah, that feels really awesome. Um, and I can't wait to use this thing. Um, I haven't gotten to use it yet uh, other than my test stamp, but I was very happy with it. It looks very realistic. And um, I plan to do both using it as um, a stamp for, you know, like uh, acrylics directly, but I also thought about using the texture medium and then stamping it into the texture medium That's and then letting that dry. Nice. Well, I'm going to be sending you a couple of sheets of paper to work on. Oh, I'd love that. Here, my next batch, because a lot of the papers look like what you're actually working on now. Mm -hmm. so we'll see what you do with them. Oh, yeah. I look forward to it. This one was inspired because it looked like a forest scene to me, and it was an accident, but I love the way that the, um, the Payne's gray kind of looks like it's a sky with um, forest there. Very, very nice, Michelle. Yeah, I, so I should show one of my ambitions. One of my ambitions, I've got a couple of these that I purchased to paint on uh, a while back when like, we're talking like back in in like May, uh, they're leather. Um, wow, that looks like that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I thought it was perfect for cor like, like Corona times. And, and um, I wanted to do maybe like a fox's eyes here and then butterflies coming up the brim, but I hadn't decided yet uh i was gonna try out some different test uh sketches that is, that is so cool yeah i got i found them on amazon um a while back um they did have to be shipped so they took forever because they had to be shipped from china okay uh, I, they might be faster now but um but they are real leather and they weren't crazy expensive the other one i have is black wow I want to do some sort of galaxy design on on it, but I. Well, I can't wait to see those. Those are going to be awesome. 
Yeah, I, I really want to challenge myself to finish those um, before the end of the quarantine. So that because guess, guess what, Michelle, you got 20 days left. I know. I keep telling myself that, but I'm also feeling uh, more correction. Confident. 19. <laughs> well, you know, the pressure, the pressure's <laughs> on. <laughs> it's well. cool. I'm feeling more confident now, though. It had been a while uh, since I had been in doing traditional media uh, mm -hmm. with parenting. Um, honestly, I had really went all into digital, um, not because digital is my favorite, but because digital paint doesn't dry. I so, yeah, you could always put it down and walk away. And if you don't know what you were doing, you could hit undo. That's <laughs> right. You remember. Back up. Exactly. I love that backup button, the re reverse button. Yeah, but I was, I, I don't know, I was also kind of lucky because um, I had just started selling patterns on fabric when mm -hmm. Corona started. I mean, not that Corona's lucky for anything, like, <laughs> it's bad, but like, uh, it was like, it was a good time to have start sell, selling fabric. <laughs> right. Well, I can't wait to see those masks. Those are going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard that um, well, they're really stiff too, though, so they shouldn't like bend the acrylic too much. Um, and I paint so thinly that I can't imagine I'm going to paint it to the point where it's going to crack. I, I'm used to painting shoes. I um, think the way you paint, you should be able to paint on just about anything. <laughs> yeah, you because know, the way you work, you work up in thin layers. So if it's going to not <laughs> stick, you'll know right away. Right. Yeah, that's true. Cool. I was watching you paint. Up. I'd never considered painting on plates or things that I found in the um, in the thrift store. Grab something. Grab a piece of wood. Anything. Just grab mm -hmm. something different. It's going to change your life. Mm hmm. I have done wood and tile, um, but I hadn't like I hadn't considered objects. I look, that you, look, I just watched you paint on metal. Okay. <laughs> if you can paint on metal, you can paint on anything. But I want to see that black mask you had there. Woo! That's oh, yeah. let me see. Where's the black mask? Did I miss it? Yeah, you missed it. Show it to her. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a plague doctor mask. Yeah, I've got a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And they're wearable, mm -hmm. too. I tried it on. Um, oh, yeah, I, I've seen those. You, That's can nice. wear it, you can wear it during the exhibition at uh, Art for the Soul Gallery. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> my husband well, said like, I'm not going to be that daring. <laughs> my, my husband said he'll, he can pull it off. <laughs> there you go. You can pull it off. Works for me. Sounds to good. Well, we're going to let you go ahead and work for as long as you want to. I see you stretching that hand. Yeah, I might take a break. Um, I thought about uh, uh, sketching, but I don't. I, I think I'm still shy about sketching on camera. <laughs> I think I can videotape myself, but I can't do it live. Don't don't say you can't. Don't think about That's it. That's true. Thank you. You're right. And I'm trying to be more you, you have already come so far out the blocks from where you started. Mm -hmm. And so far, the bravest person has been Kathleen. Mm -hmm. she, yes. She attempted to do oil painting for the very first time live. Oh, wow. Mm hmm That is brave. <laughs> and she is probably uh, more of a perfectionist than all of us. And she did a fantastic job, too. I really love that piece. Oh, she I showed, missed it. She showed the pieces this morning. I was like, now you got something. You would have never got that if you hadn't experimented. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That's awesome. Mm hmm all yeah, right, and I, I did send you some videos of me. I sent some videos of how I carved the stamp, and then um, uh, I sent the video of the making of this particular paper. Fantastic. Well, we'll be playing it tomorrow. Cool. All right, dear. Well, All right, Miss okay, Neil. Have a great one. Good night now. Mm. What's going on, Ryan? You are just cutting up. Ryan is over there cricketing, cricketing, cricketing. Ryan is cutting up all of the board in the house. <laughs> well, hopefully we're getting some good views of this machine. I've been ex um, been experimenting with like filming different angles while this is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just did a time lapse. I think it turned out pretty good. Great. The goal is to finish. I'm really, I'm really intrigued by this, uh, this, this cricket machine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a lifesaver. 
It looks like something I should get in the studio just to play around with. I know. I've been wanting to get a cricket. Yeah, they, they have plenty of them at Michael's. I know. I've sat in the cricket aisle for a while because, you know, I do T-shirts, too. And I thought about, wow, I want to, I should get the cricket for my T-shirt because you can do T-shirts, too. And you can do um, you can do stickers and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. just about. Yeah, I went to that website and saw all the different packages they have. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And the machines are pretty affordable. Yeah, they're not incredibly expensive. Crickets aren't. Hey Ryan, how long have you had this particular unit? Since August of last year. And I've still only scratched the surface. Have you had to change the blade much yet? Um, I've kept the same blade in, actually. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to replace it at some point, but I mean, it's getting the job done still. I, I imagine at, at some point within the coming months, I'll probably have to look at it. Right. But I don't know. It's, it's been pretty successful. <laughs> And the um the blade itself is in um like there there's two holders in here that are going um well only only the b one is going because it has something in it but um the one marked a is where you would put in um like a drawing utensil and i think that it, it would be able to draw a design on something for you okay do you draw on that machine much i've actually i actually have not done it yet <laughs> I've just been cutting this whole time. Seven layers down, three to go. Wow. That's a lot of layers. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually um, several different images with multiple mm -hmm. layers, but um, they're right. all on this big piece up here. The goal is to finish it tonight. Oh, okay. Uh, this figure here. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Really, the only thing that wears down over time so far has been the mats, because uh, they have like this adhesive on them that um, it just like wears down with the more times you use it, but. It comes with multiple maps. So the the the, um, the boards that you're using for your stencils is that a special Cricut board you have to buy, or can you put any kind of board in it? You can put any kind of board in. There's many different presets um, for cardboard, even something as thin as tissue paper. Wow. Hmm. I think you can etch into metal too. I'm not sure. Or definitely wood. It depends on which cricket you get. Yeah, I think that's the case too. Here you can see green here. I'm clicking on all the stuff I want to take out and save it as a cut image. That's my first layer of this new image. And then the second, you can see each layer is going to have different amounts of detail. And um, I did the saw in Photoshop beforehand, separating them into layers. 
This one has, yeah, four. You drew those in Photoshop? Uh, it's, it's actually a, a photograph that I edited. Okay. Yeah, this is the original one here. Yeah. This is more just um, so I have the edges to work with. Well, Ryan, we're going to let you do your thing, man. Just keep, we're going to keep you up on the stream. All right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else came in? We all got room for Sheldon. Waiting for Sheldon. Did LaShawn run out on us? Um, no, he's, he's probably taking a break. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because his window's still up. That means he's still working. And what are you working on today, Poncho? I'm getting ready to finish up my last one of my one more of my ink drawers. Oh, okay. Oh, Bristol board. He's using Bristol. Nice.
How you doing up there, Ryan? I see you got your stencils in, huh?
can you hear me, Ryan? Oh, hold on. You're uh, let me unmute you. There you go. I see you got your are your stencils all done. I see you're putting some up. Yeah, yeah, they're all cut out. I just have to like figure out which colors I want to use and how I want to arrange them. Okay. Blues. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh, what you working on tonight, Sheldon? Try this trick. It creates like a uh, sort of a starry. Uh, so I'm going with something a little bit more uh, bright and a bit of a futuristic type of look. Oh, okay. Totally experiment. Thank you. 
What are you over there working on, Poncho? Oh, I'm just working on my uh, my ink series. Got a good flow going tonight. So are you doing those on regular on on paper? Yeah, these are on paper. All spontaneous drawing. Mm.
Sancho, we have a question. Sure. It says, how did you curate this group of artists? We did an artist call. And then the rest of it was a recruitment from the Springfield area. So I handpicked about five people and six of the other people are from, I don't think if I did that number right, six are from abroad and uh, no, is it six are abroad? Yeah, five are abroad and seven are local mm -hmm. in the Springfield area.
Well, 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 everybody, we are at the 450 hour, four hours and 50 minutes. We are about to get ready to shut her down for tonight. And we are going to resume tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ryan, that is looking hot, brother. You got some, some exciting work going on tonight, man. We will see you tomorrow, my man. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to send you some pictures of uh, this other canvas that I was working on. Sounds now, did you fair. finish Did you finish that piece, Ryan, or are you still working on it, the one you just took down? I think it may be done. Um, I'm going to take some pictures tomorrow when there's like daylight and see. Man, that is really nice, it's pretty Ryan. pretty fabulous. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. You are the man, Ryan. All right, my friend, we'll check in on you tomorrow and see how things are coming along. All right, sounds good. Have a okay, good night. Ryan. And last but not least, our main man, Mr. Sheldon. Mr. Sheldon. In the house, he is working some mixing meat. Oh, he's got all the nice looking coordinated tools on the side. Mm hmm. How are you feeling tonight, Sheldon? Feeling pretty good. Pretty good. So, Sheldon, you're painting and pastelling at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to see how the uh like the softness uh next to the the hard wet gel look looks together. Well, it's looking good, my man. We yeah, you'll have to get us a picture of that paint painting you did yesterday. See how it turned out. Yes, yes. Um <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm okay. On, I'm trying. I'm going. I'm backlogging right now, so I'm trying to label them the videos and the, the photos, and um, you know, I, I don't want to just dump a bunch of stuff on you and you know be like, what? Well, well what to do with this? So uh, just to give a better idea of what it is and when it was shot. But here's some content coming. Okay. All We're right, we will be looking forward to seeing what you got tomorrow. See how things are shaping up. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right, my man, have a good night. All right, Shelton. Well, I guess it's down to you and I, date, darling. Well, it's usually just down to you and I. I, I think you and I should just have a like a, a, a all nighter. Uh, all night is just pull it all open. night, all <laughs> night long. <laughs> you open all night. <laughs> and let it roll. We got some folks yeah. signing off. Thank you okay. so much for hanging in with us tonight. See you tomorrow, we'll you Carol. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody out there, you see the artists are all in effect. We will be showing you more of what we've been working on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is day 12, y'all. Day 12. Woo! I know. I got to stretch my back a little bit. Yeah, I might have to do more than stretch my back. 
but I'm gonna stay here for a few more hours and work through the at least till about maybe midnight, uh, just after midnight. Yeah, I'm gonna do something different because this right here. <laughs> yeah, that's not a great position to be in. You might have to do some standing artwork for a couple of days to make up for that. I know, I know, because I was, you know, I got down to like some just to the sort of edges, and I was like. I want to stop, but it's still tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up where it's still sticky. And then I'm done. I, <laughs> I was like, well, I'm going to take a few days off now. All right. So you're going to come back to the gilding. That gilding, you've been gilding that thing all day, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been working on it because I did some time lapse. And I still got, you know, it's still got quite a bit to go. Um, but you know what? It's progressing. And I like that. It's not up here anymore. Look, it's it's not up here anymore. No, you're making some great progress. At least down there, yeah. So I'm making some progress on it. I've once this gilded, I think it'll go pretty pretty quickly. But it's the it's the gilding that's taking taking a minute, and that's okay. But I'm gonna work on something different tomorrow because I don't like to keep working on this. But it's been fun because it's given me an opportunity to really look at the face. Mm -hmm. and see what I like, what I might want to change. And so it's really been giving me an opportunity to like, to get to know this person. Well, that's good. And sort of get a feel for it. So, yeah. Well, we had another full day, lady. Tomorrow is another another day. I will get ready to sign off and we will <laughs> same time, same station. If you're watching late and you missed the show, you can catch us on Facebook under mm -hmm. Art of the Soul Gallery. And you can also yep. find us on Creative Quarantine. Quarantine. Mm -hmm. And if you get real bored and you want to see all 12 shows, go to my YouTube channel, Larry Potter, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you'll see all of the shows there. Okay? Until tomorrow, y'all. I can't believe it. We get ready to say the word 13. 13. I'm about well, to go put it up right doing. now. All right, my dear. We will see you all tomorrow.